So now let's get started with the revision of the fifth chapter, which is working capital management of working capital. Now, what is this chapter all about? So as usual, let us first bring the context and let us see why we are studying this chapter and then we will proceed into the technicalities of this particular chapter. Now, as we all know, as we all know, our subject financial management has broadly three objectives. So what are the three objectives that our subject financial management has? Yes, the first one is financing decisions that is taking decisions with respect to raising of funds, raising of capital. Then you have investment decisions that is taking decisions regarding where these funds need to be invested, right? And then finally you have dividend decisions, right? Now, we saw some chapters in financing decisions like your cost of capital, leverages and uh, your capital structure decisions. Then investment decisions, we saw the capital budgeting chapter, yes. Now, in dividend decisions, there's a separate chapter called dividend decisions. Now, this chapter, working capital management, working capital management. Now, where does this chapter fit into? Or in other words, this chapter fits into which of the three objectives? Now, strictly speaking, this working capital management is actually something separate by itself, is something separate by itself. Or if you want to plug it under any of these three objectives, the most the most relatable objective under which you can classify the working capital management is your investment decisions. I will just tell you what it is and all. I will tell you what it is. You need not have to worry. But this can also be classified under financing decisions. But that is the reason why I'm saying I don't want to bring it under any classification. This working capital management, you treat it as a separate animal as such. It is a separate study as such called as working capital management. Are you clear with this? I will just go about the introduction. I will tell you what is working capital, why we are studying all these things. And of course, there are a few concepts that we have studied in costing that needs to be related while studying this particular chapter. Are you clear with this? So for the time being, you just a separate study under financial management by itself. So don't try to plug it under any of the three objectives because in this chapter, you have both the financing decisions as well as the investment decisions. How it is, I will tell you as we proceed into this particular chapter. So now, what do you mean by working capital? What do you mean by working capital? Working capital means current assets minus current liabilities. This is something that you have already studied. This is something that you would have already studied even right from your school days, your 11th and 12th, wherever, right from your commerce in your, uh, in your accounts, you would have studied all these formulas. Working capital refers to current assets minus current liabilities. All these things are fine. But now we are going to look at this logically. We are going to understand what exactly do you mean by working capital and all. Clear with this. Now, 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 what has happened? The company has chosen the sources of finance. Correct? Let's again drop the balance sheet of the company. There are multiple sources of finance like equity share capital, your retained earnings, preference share capital, your debentures, right? There are multiple sources of finance. So the company has designed the optimum capital structure. They have decided which from which source of finance, how much should be the amount raised. Financing decisions is over. Now, once this is over, they have also purchased all their fixed assets. That is, they have taken the capital budgeting decisions, investment decisions. The company has purchased a nice big factory inside that all sophisticated machines are all there. Everything is set right now. Now, now the company has raised money and they have also purchased whatever they want. All the fixed assets, the equipments and all have been purchased. Now, can I start the business today itself right from this second? Can I start the business? I have everything with me, no? I have all my, I have all my uh, factories. I have my, in, uh, inside the factory, I have all my sophisticated machinery, equipments. I have everything, right? So can I immediately start my business? Let us say I am a pen manufacturer, right? I have everything right now. Can I start my business? No. Why? Because, because for you to start your business, yes, you have all the facility, all the facility is there with you. Yes, no doubt. But, but to start your business, you need to first purchase some raw materials, correct? Then, then you need to actually function, start the factory, 
correct and you need to put your workers to actually convert this raw material into a finished goods for this conversion you also need some electricity power and all are you clear with this there are so many things that are required for my day-to-day -day running of business yes so technically speaking technically speaking my fixed assets are not the only investment that goes into the business there is also something that i actually need to run my day-to-day -day operations and that is called as working capital that is called as working capital so what is it sir? what is it can you explain it now let us just take an example let us just take an example why do we need working capital let us just take an example now now i have all these things set long-term sources of finance i have raised yes and then all my i have purchased machineries equipments and everything is set now i need to start my business let us say i get my first order let's say i am getting my first order from a big client okay i'm a pen manufacturer i'm getting an order from a big client now now what happens is now this company is saying for me to get this order this company is saying this company my client they want to know whether i have the capacity to fulfill my honor that is uh, they i have the capacity to fulfill my commitment that is i have the capacity to fulfill the order so what they are saying is look you should readily have three months of your raw material stock whatever is a raw material stock that you generally have it should be held with you for a period of three months only if you hold your raw material for three months i will be ready to accept your order or in other words i will be ready to give you this particular order so now what they are saying is first what the company does what the company does so first they introduce cash into the business so i am the pen manufacturer i bring in cash correct now using this cash what i do i purchase raw material right i purchase raw material now what happens the raw material i need to keep it in my stores in my godown for three months let us say that is the precondition of this order generally i maintain three months of stock in my godown clear now now after this this raw material needs to be converted into WIP correct so let us say for a period of three months the raw material stays in my godown after that after that I will issue this raw material into my factory shop that is the production will start let us assume the production will take one month okay let us assume for the raw material to get converted into an FG that is in WIP stage the uh, raw uh, the entire process will take about one month yes or no now now after this immediately will i be getting the cash no this wap will be converted into what this wap will be converted into an fg correct this wap will be converted into an fg now let us say in this fg in this fg let us say generally generally the company holds this for let us assume one and a half months so the moment i manufacture the moment i convert my raw material into fg will i immediately able to sell it no let us say that it needs to stay in my warehouse for a period of one and a half months then what happens then what happens after this fg after this fg is actually present now what i will do i will sell the fg now if i sell the fg will i to get the cash today itself no what will happen this my customer will was asked for some credit period so there will be debtors there will be debtors now this guy says no i want two months time to actually pay you the money so after this two months only i will be getting my cash back correct or not or in other words first if i introduce cash into my business yes i need to purchase raw material and the raw material stock will remain with me for a period of three months correct then 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 what happens this raw material needs to be converted into an fg and for the conversion it takes one month for me to produce the moment i complete my production i cannot sell it immediately it will be in my the finished goods will be in my warehouse for a period of one and a half months right after that when i am selling i will not be able to get the cash immediately because the debtors are asking me a credit period of two months and after that only after that only i am able to get the cash or in other words if you see here if you see here so if i introduce cash into the business when will i get back this cash 
it takes three months plus one month plus one and a half month plus two months correct so three plus one four plus 1.5 that's going to be 5.5 plus two 7.5 so in this example just an example so technically it takes seven and a half months for me to get back my cash the time period that i take to actually bring my cash back into my business is called as working capital cycle it is also known as operating cycle are you clear with this so what is this basically so now apart from apart from my investment in my all my fixed assets and machinery for me to run my business i need to introduce cash correct i need to bring in an investment this investment is for what this investment is to purchase raw material and then there are some factors of production labor overheads and all i need to incur for the purpose of converting this into converting raw material into fg and that fg cannot be sold immediately it will stay as fg stock for some period and then it will be converted into a debtors for some period and after that only i will get back my cash this cash includes profit so what i actually introduce into my working capital cycle will be my investment but finally what i get back will be slightly more than the investment why because debtors is at sales price sales price will include a margin are you clear with this so basically what will happen look this is what happens this is what happens just an example let us say the overall working capital just an example the overall working capital is how much let us say 100 crores the overall 100 uh, uh, working capital is 100 crores now let's say for the cycle to get over after after let us say this working capital cycle of 7.5 months in our example let us say i will get i will get 105 crores this includes profit clear now what will i do can i take back this 105 crores now no the next working capital cycle will continue why I am running a business. I am running a business. So obviously the cycle needs to keep on moving. The moment 7.5 months gets over, the next work, working capital cycle will start. Now, now what I will do in the second cycle, I will invest back 100 crore rupees. Correct? Correct. And then it takes another 7.5 months to come out of this. Correct? So basically out of this working capital, in this working capital cycle, I introduced 100 rows. At the time when I get it back, I will definitely get slightly more than that. So ideally speaking, I can take this 5 crores out of my business and this 100 crores again needs to be reinvested back. And this 5 crores, I can use it, use it to actually finance. I can use it to pay my interest on whatever is the loan that I am borrowing. Let me come to that in a short while from now. So basically, this working capital is a permanent amount that gets blocked into the business and now it gets released after the cycle gets over again it gets reinvested for the next cycle then after that cycle gets over again it gets released then again it should get reinvestment reinvested and the cycle goes on forever now when will the cycle stop sir when the company stops the business when the company stops the business in the last cycle yes after that you need not reinvest it back you can just take back the entire working capital amount this is why let's connect the dots this is why i said in the previous chapter that is in investment decisions i told you your working capital is an outflow initially and at the end of the life of the project it becomes an inflow i told you right so basically this 100 crores i'm putting into the business it's not a cost it's an investment so i need to invest this amount it gets recycled once again once again once again and life just keeps on going are you clear with this so basically i need to introduce this extra 100 crores into my business this 100 crores is my working capital this 100 crores is my working capital are you clear with this are you clear with this now now i need to bring this 100 crores into my business yes i need to bring this 100 crores this is over and above my capital investment that the amount that i invested in my plant and machinery all the equipments and all that now now and this is a cycle that keeps on going so the moment i i actually introduce i borrow this 100 crores and introduce it into the business it always remains in the business now i need 100 crores for what for my working capital day to day functioning now how can i get this 100 crores how can i get this 100 crores broadly there are two ways broadly there are two ways so working capital 
investment how much is the working capital investment amount that i need 100 crores correct how will i finance this working capital there are broadly two ways one is you can go to a bank and you can ask them for a loan now remember this one thing very clearly how much will you ask them for 100 crores now you tell me now you tell me this 100 crores this 100 crores can you repay it after 7.5 months no this is a long term loan why so after 7.5 months in this example 7.5 months after this working capital cycle again this 100 crores needs to be reinvested into the next cycle and it just keeps on going like that but but what happens is every time the cycle gets over i get an amount that is slightly more than my that is slightly more than my investment using this extra money i can pay them the interest and i can keep on servicing the loan are you clear with this so technically when you are borrowing money when you are funding for working capital that is also a long-term borrowing only are you clear with this guys are you clear with this so when i go for when i go for sources of finance to fund my working capital remember that working capital is generally a long-term source of financing right now what is the alternate source what is the alternate source of what is another source for financing your working capital this could be this could be your current liabilities that is trade creditors or bank od etc short-term borrowings short-term borrowings etc sir what is this now now you look at this you look at this what i said once i bring in cash into the business right i am in purchasing the raw material the raw material stays in my uh, the raw material stays in my stock in my stock for a period of three months correct so technically the immediately once i make the investment in my raw material i cannot convert it into money it stays idle for a period of three months after that another one month is required for converting it into uh, into um, fg Yes, and then 1.5 months it remains in the FG stock, then two more months it takes to actually convert it into my debtors, correct? Now, now, what I can do is, what I can do is, instead of financing this entire amount, I can go to my, but I can go to my supplier. The supplier is what? The supplier of raw material. I can ask him, sir, I am also doing a business, so I am having this cash liquidity and all. I will continue to do business with you only. I will be your customer. You don't worry. I will purchase only from you. But you don't ask me to pay the cash today itself. You give me some credit period. You ask me, you give me some credit period. And you allow me time for payment of this particular raw material. I will not pay you today itself. You just give me two months credit period, sir. So I will pay you after two months. So technically speaking, technically speaking, my funds get blocked into the business for a 7.5 months, no doubt. But, but now in this case, out of the 7.5 months, two months, this stock, this raw material supplier, he is ready to fund you indirectly. Or in other words, he says, he is not funding me by way of paying me cash but he's funding me by supplying the raw material. So he says, I will give you the raw material today. You need not pay me today. You pay it to me after two months. So indirectly, it is also a source of finance only, correct? So technically, my gross, gross working capital cycle is 7.5 months, but out of the 7.5 months, two months, this guy, my supplier is ready to bear the burden. So technically, my net working capital cycle is now reduced to 5.5 months. Or, or in other words, in other words, this is also, this creditors, trade creditors are also an indirect source of financing. Are you clear with this? So that is the reason, that is the reason why working capital is generally called as current assets minus current liabilities. Current assets we saw here, three months for raw material, one month for WIP, 1.5 months for FG, all these are inventories, two months for debtors, correct? Gross working capital is 7.5 months, less creditors gives me a credit period of two months. So net off, if you do overall, the net 5.5 months is going to be my working capital cycle. So technically, the period that I take to convert cash into cash is called as working capital cycle. And this is, this is partly funded by external sources of finance like bank loan and all that. 
the other one is imbibed in the cycle itself that is by way of trade creditors and short term borrowings are you clear with this so the reason why we call working capital as current assets minus current liabilities is this is the gross amount of investment that is required for my day to day functioning out of this to the extent of current liabilities it is being funded by my suppliers etc are you clear with this so the net funding that i need to bring into my business for the purpose of running my day to day operations is called as working capital are you cleared with this so now now working capital two things are there you should find out how much amount you of working capital you need for your business correct then once you find out the amount you should next to find out how will you fund this correct so there are two decisions that you need you need to take in this particular chapter the first one is working capital investment how much is the amount of working capital i need for my business that is number 1 number 2 yes i know that i need 100 crores now how am i going to fund it that is the second decision that is how am i going to finance this working capital that's why i said this chapter is both financing decisions as well as as well as your uh investment decisions but then the only issue here is the only issue here is we are talking about current assets and current liabilities so it is slightly different it is slightly different from what we saw in our capital budgeting and all are you clear with this yes so now now let us just go to this particular area so management of working capital now in our study material generally this chapter gets tested for 10 marks now this chapter is divided into six units as per our icai study materials divided into six units introduction to working capital management this is the basic concepts of working capital then then they go on to explain each and every each and every uh, component of working capital so working capital is what current assets minus current liabilities so current assets typically can have what it can have stock correct then it can have debtors then it can have cash correct right then current liabilities can generally have what payables correct or not or creditors yes so each of these components there are some decisions that you need to take that are covered here look at this treasury and cash management management of inventory management of receivables management of payables and finally you have something called as financing of working capital this is technically a theory area clear so overall the scope of this chapter is the first part is about the general study of this chapter then the next five units the next four units are regarding studying certain different components of working capital and the last part is about how am i going to finance so this is basically a theory part so this is going to be the agenda for this particular chapter are you clear with this so working capital is nothing but current assets minus current liabilities so current assets include what inventory inventory means it includes your raw material wap finished goods receivables cash or cash equivalents prepaid expenses and all of that right and then your credit uh, your current liabilities will includes the payable and any kind of outstanding payment that you've got okay so now working capital management on the basis of value gross working capital net working capital gross working capital means what your current assets gross amount is current assets net working capital is current assets minus current liabilities are you clear with this are you clear with this see gross working capital refers to the firm's investment in current assets whereas the net working capital refers to difference between the current assets and current liabilities now on the basis of time on the basis of time working capital can be classified into permanent working capital fluctuating working capital permanent working capital is this amount that i told you this 100 crores at any given point of time i need this 100 crores for my business correct now let us say for one season alone let's say i am a sweet manufacturer during diwali time i have an excess demand for that period alone for my day to day operations since the demand is more i need to have more funding but once the diwali season gets over then i can just push it away i can just remove this investment from my business and take it back so the short term requirement suddenly for seasonal extra requirement if i need that is called as fluctuating working capital so permanent working capital means what the amount of working capital that i need generally at any given point of time for running my day to day operations whereas fluctuating working capital means the extra working capital that i might need seasonally occasionally in my business are you clear with this yes and a positive working capital indicates the company's ability to pay its short term liabilities so what do you mean by working capital current assets minus current liabilities so if the current assets is more than your current liabilities it means it means that even in a worst case scenario 
tomorrow if everything goes wrong you are shutting down your business now if i sell all my current assets that value itself will be sufficient to pay my current liabilities correct so it talks about the solvency of the company short term solvency of company even if something goes wrong if i sell my current assets the amount that i'm able to generate from the current asset should be able to recover my current liability so generally it is ideal to have a positive working capital are you clear with this yes so now why do we need adequate working capital now what do you mean by the word adequate adequate means adequate means not high and not less remember this what do you mean by adequate working capital the working capital that you have in your business it should not be too high it should also not be too less sir why sir a large amount of working capital would mean that the company is having idle funds correct now 100 crores i'm saying i need for working capital for running my business if you're borrowing 100 crores now and you're putting it in your business this 100 crore rupees is blocked in your business it is not a cost it is blocked in your business this can be released only after you permanently shut down your business correct so for this 100 crores there is a cost that comes along with it now now more let us say i want to be more uh, cautious and i borrow more and i have more working capital you tell me the cost that comes for financing this working capital will now increase for me that is a huge burden so i should not have high working capital because the funds are blocked into my business it remains idle sir then if we have less working capital what will happen that is also bad inadequate working capital if you have a lesser working capital what will happen you will not be able to meet your day-to-day -day commitments let us say you are investing lesser amount of money in your purchasing purchasing your stocks and all that you get a huge order today he's saying i immediately want this particular order so give it to me because of lesser working capital you are not able to fulfill that order so now what happens you are losing out on your business so there will be some opportunity losses and all so this is what it is the firm runs the risk of insolvency you will not be able to generate business now what happens your current assets will not even be sufficient to require your current liability the paucity of working capital paucity means scarcity of working capital may lead to a situation where the firm may not be able to meet its liabilities it may also mean that the firm may not be holding enough inventory in order to meet the customer's demand and hence would lose the sales and eventually some reputation as well so basically the working capital investment in this company in any company should neither be too high it should not it should not be too low why should it not be too high because your investment the working capital investment comes with a cost so it's basically an amount blocked in the business more the amount blocked in the business more will be your finance cost associated with your working capital borrowings correct then what happens if you have lesser working capital if you have less working capital you might lose out on your opportunities to run your day-to-day -day operations and it will affect your solvency position so what is the most important thing here you need to maintain adequate means what the right amount of working capital are you clear with this now now determination of working capital yes so this is what it is now what it is look at this in the scope of working capital management now we will be reading something about liquidity and profitability then investment and financing investment and financing i told you investment talks about how much amount of working capital i need financing talks about where from i am going to get this amount where from i'm going to get this amount clear now what is the issue relating to liquidity and profitability liquidity means what liquidity means what liquidity means having more cash having more cash is called as liquidity profitability means what having more profit remember these two are different things more cash does not mean more profit and more profit does not mean more cash what it is you will see for uninterrupted and smooth functioning of day-to-day -day business of an entity it is important to maintain the liquidity of funds evenly liquidity means what you should have the cash in the business clear as we have already learned in the previous chapters each rupee of capital bears some cost so while maintaining the liquidity the cost aspects need to be borne in mind also a higher working capital may be intended to increase the revenue and hence the profitability if you have a high working capital what will happen now you have more funds so you can generate more sales more sales if you generate what happens more profit will be there correct but at the same time unnecessary tying up of funds and idle assets not only reduces the liquidity but also reduces the opportunity to earn a better return 
from a productive asset. So what happens right now? This is one side of it, but the other side of it, what happens here is now, now you are tying up more funds in your business because of this, there is some cost associated to this. Clear. Hence, a trade-off is required between liquidity and profitability. Sir, which is good? Liquidity or profitability? No, you cannot say that this is only best. There needs to be a trade-off. Means what? Balancing between the two. Right? More liquidity, less profitability, that is also bad. More profitability, less liquidity, that is also bad. So you need to strike a perfect balance between the two. Ensure that there is sufficient cash and with this sufficient cash, you are also able to generate sufficient profit. That's about it. Are you clear with this? This is all about, this is all about three E's. That is economy in financing, efficiency in utilization and effectiveness in achieving the objectives. All these are theoretical parts. Are you clear with this? Fine. Now, this is what I said, investment and financing. Investment means how much amount is required. Financing of working capital means where from the amount is required, right? And estimation of working capital needs, I told you, this is also called as working capital operating cycle, also known as working capital cycle. It's also known as cash cycle. So generally it is done by way of holding period of assets. I told you, right? So I need, I need three months for my raw material stock. Then my raw material stock remains in uh, my uh, go down for three months. And then, and then it takes one, one month or one and a half months for me to convert it into an FG and all of that. We will be seeing a comprehensive numerical sum. So don't worry about it. Now let's get started with this first problem. By way of this problem, we will learn more about this working capital, right? So first let's get started with this problem. On 1st January, the managing director of Naurin Limited wishes to know the amount of working capital that will be required during the year. From the following information, prepare the working capital requirements forecast. So the managing director of a particular company, he wants to know how much is the amount of working capital that in working capital investment that is required for my day to day running of my business, right? What they are saying. Production during the previous year was 60,000 units. It is planned that this level of activity would be maintained for the present year also. So the upcoming year, I'm going to produce how many units? 60,000 units. The expected ratios of cost to selling prices are given as follows. Raw material is generally 60% of my sales value. Direct wages is generally 10% of my sales value. Overheads is generally 20% of my sales value. So raw material 60 wages 10 and overheads 20 percentage right next raw materials are expected to remain in store for an average of two months before being issued the production so basically they are saying if i purchase a raw material today immediately i will not start converting into an fg it has to wait in the go down for two months it is the company's policy correct then each unit is expected to be in the process for one month the raw material being fed into the pipeline immediately and the labor and overhead cost accruing evenly during the month. What they are saying? So raw material stock, two months. They are saying WIP, what will happen? It remains in the process. It takes one month for them to convert the RM into WAP. Clear with this? So then and there, evenly, your raw material will be fed into this particular machinery and evenly the production will happen the labor and overage will be incurred evenly during the course of this particular month. Then, once the production is completed, finished goods will be there. Now, immediately, finished goods, can it be sold? No. It has to stay in the warehouse awaiting dispatch to customers for approximately three months. So, finished goods, my money gets locked up by way of finished goods for a period of three months. Then, credit allowed by creditors is two months from the date of delivery of raw material. Credit allowed to debtors is three months from the date of dispatch. Now, after FG, what happens? Debtors. Now, immediately will I be able to generate? The moment I sell my FG, will I be able to generate money? Will I be able to generate cash? No. The debtors say that they want three months of credit period. Right? Right? But wait, parallelly, the creditors are also saying that they will give me, they will give me, the creditors are saying, saying that they will give me two months of credit period. So this is an advantage for me. Are you clear with this? Yes. Next. Selling price is 5 rupees per unit. There is a regular production and sales cycle. Wages and overheads are paid on the first of each month for the previous month. And the company normally needs cash in hand to the extent of 20,000. What we need to do, we need to calculate the working capital requirement, right? 
So pause this video right now, read this question once and then let us continue with the discussion further. So now, now first, first, let us calculate the component wise amount that gets blocked into the business. Component wise amount that gets blocked into the business. Now recall, recall in costing, in costing, we have learned something called as cost sheet, right? Fine. If you do not know, if you have not learned costing, if you are directly entering into FM, right? There's something called as cost sheet. So what is basically a cost sheet? What is basically a cost sheet? In cost sheet, in cost sheet, basically we have direct material plus direct labor plus direct expenses. It gives you something called as prime cost. To this, you will add your production overheads you get something called as you get something called as gross works cost right add opening WIP minus closing WIP you get something called as net works cost or popularly known as factory costs right from this add your opening FG minus closing FG you get something called as you get something called as cost of goods sold to this you will add administrative overheads and add selling and distribution overheads you get something called as cost of sales to this if you add a profit you will get the sales value now basically this is a format of cost sheet so what happens is for me to convert for me to produce and sell one unit what are all the costs that i will be incurring direct material direct labor direct expenses correct so all the direct expenses put together is called as prime cost to this i will also be incurring some indirect expenses that are incurred inside the factory example for production overheads indirect expenses incurred inside the factory this is going to be factory rent just an example right now if i add all these things i get something called as gross work cost now, now, not every units are completed in all aspects. So the incomplete units are called WIP. So adjust for WIP, add opening WIP minus closing WIP. You get the networks cost or the factory cost, correct? So this is basically, this is also known as cost of production. That is for me to produce every single unit, I incur material, labor, direct expenses and production overheads. Or in other words, I incur all the costs incurred inside the factory. Yes. To this, I adjust for my opening and closing FG. I get cost of goods sold. Correct? Yes. Now, I add my administrative overheads and selling overheads. So, what do you mean by administrative overheads? Any expenses incurred for my administration activity. For example, for example, I can call it as office rent. Office rent. Correct? Office rent. Or I would say MD salary. MD salary, all these are administrative overheads. Selling overheads, I would, uh, the example for selling overheads will be sales commission, sales commission, or we can even say warehouse rent, correct, warehouse rent. So any kind of indirect expense incurred in the sales area is called as selling and overheads. So to my cost of goods sold, if I add my administrative overheads and selling overheads, I get the cost of sales. What do you mean by cost of sales? The cost incurred in respect of every unit sold. But uh, whereas what is the cost of production? This is nothing but the cost incurred in respect of every unit produced. What is the difference between the two? Here, only the cost incurred inside the factories are considered. That is nothing but direct material, direct labor, direct expenses and production overheads. Whereas, whereas in case of units sold, apart from over and above my cost of production, I will also incur my administrative overheads and selling overheads. Are you clear with this? To which I, if I add profit, this is going to be my sales. Now, I'm just giving you a bird's eye view of this particular cost sheet. Now, in cost sheet, in your, uh, in your uh, costing uh, paper, cost sheet will have a few more line items. Like there will be something called as research and development expenses, quality control cost and all. Technically, all of that is a part of production overheads. There it's more format driven. But right now here, we are just looking at it from a conceptual viewpoint, which is relevant for the purpose of uh, this particular chapter, working capital management. Now, now, what they are saying, what they are saying. Now, 
I should calculate the amount of working capital that I need to be invested into my business for my day to day operation. Now, what they have said, the company is planning to produce how much 60,000 units in this particular year, 60,000 units of what FG, correct? Now, what they have said, generally raw material comprises of 60 percentage of the cost, 60 percentage of the cost for what the 60 percentage of the cost of my sales correct so now now you tell me raw materials if i buy today i will be keeping it for a period of two months before i issue it to the production so basically what is the amount of investment that is required for raw material can you tell me can you tell me now can i say this is nothing but look the cost of materials for the whole year this is cost not the investment cost of materials is 60 percentage of the sales value correct so what is the total sales they have given 60000 units they are going to sell every unit is going to be sold at rupees 5 correct and they have mentioned that 60 percentage of my sales value is generally my raw material cost i'm not talking about raw material investment this is the raw material cost correct so generally in a year the raw material cost is going to be how much 180000 now now should i introduce 180000 right now it's a no 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 i just need to first in my first working capital cycle i just need to introduce two months equivalent of my raw material consumption so in one working capital cycle i just need two months of my annual consumption annual consumption is going to be 180000 rupees worth of raw material but but for my per working capital cycle i only need to fund for two months or can we say can we say the raw material amount the raw material value that gets blocked into my working capital cycle will be 180000 rupees into 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 2 divided by 12 so how much is this so into 2 by 12 this is going to be 30000 rupees so first the amount of raw material the funding of raw material, the amount of raw material that gets blocked into the business is going to be 30,000 rupees. Are you clear with this? This 180 is the annual raw material cost that I will be incurring, but I'm talking about how much amount of working capital investment I need to bring in. For this, I need to actually stake some finance also. I just need to take up the funding for this. So two months equivalent of my annual raw material cost is only the amount of raw material that gets blocked into a particular working capital cycle are you clear with this it's enough for this fund for the first working capital cycle why because now now if i fund my one working capital cycle obviously it will generate cash that cash generated from the first cycle can be used for the second cycle then the cash generated from the second cycle can be used for the third cycle or in other words basically the amount of working capital investment that i need is basically the working capital investment pertaining to one cycle are you clear with this and in that cycle there could be current assets and current liabilities in that current liabilities one of the components is going to be raw material so raw material how much amount i need in one particular cycle i need two months of my annual requirement annual requirement of raw material is 180000 into 2 by 12 30 000 rupees would be the raw material amount that is required in the business are you clear with this then then what happens what happens then this raw material now needs to be converted into finished goods this process of conversion is called as wip correct now now you tell me you tell me guys what happens is now for a period of two months raw material remains as raw material it is not touched by anyone correct then then what they are saying next it takes one month it takes one month for the company to carry out the process or in other words for the next one month for the next one month the processing happens correct now during this one month during this one month when i am processing the entire raw material will be blocked correct that is the entire raw material is utilized for this one month of processing apart from that for this processing i will be having labor as well as overheads correct or not that is for a period of first two months raw material costs gets blocked as such then for the next one month 
raw material will now enter into the WIP area. So now the cost gets accumulated over and above the raw material cost. I will also be incurring labor cost and I will also be incurring overhead cost. Are you clear with this? So in my WIP area, in my WIP area, what happens? The amount of amount of the value of WIP. So basically the value of WIP is what the WIP is valued at material plus labor direct expenses if it is given plus overheads so every unit that gets processed now the amount that gets into the value of the WIP will not just be raw material it will be met, uh, labor and overheads should also be included now look at this what they have given each unit is expected to be in process for one month the raw materials being fed into the pipeline immediately and labor and overhead cost accrue evenly during the month what they are saying what they are saying look at this look at this very very important now look at this this is a machine right this is a machine now what they are saying first raw material i had this raw material for uh, two months right we saw the raw material was remaining as raw material untouched for two months now what happened once this two months got over now i poured this entire raw material into what into this machinery this is where my this is where my processing happens so what happened this entire raw material it entered into my machine correct now now on this immediately this raw material will not get converted into an fg and go out no it will take one month time to convert this raw material into an fg are you clear with this that processing is called as wip now, now, what they are saying is raw material cost is incurred at the beginning itself. The moment the WAP process starts, entire raw material is poured, correct? But, but the process of conversion, the process of conversion takes one month time. Or in other words, conversion costs is nothing but your labor and overheads. But the labor and overheads overnight I will not incur. It incurs evenly during the course of the entire month. That is, I will not be incurring the labor cost and overhead cost in a single day. Every day, people will be working. The power will be consumed evenly for the entire month only. The labor and overhead cost will be incurred. Whereas the raw material cost, it is incurred at the beginning of the month itself. Are you clear with this? So, can I say this raw material cost gets logged for a period of one more month inside this working WAP. Are you clear with this? So can we say in this WAP, in this WAP, raw material stock gets logged in for one more month, correct? Or this is nothing but 1,80,000 is the annual raw material consumption, correct? Into 1 divided by 12. So 1,80,000, 1,80,000 by 12, how much is it? 15,000 rupees. So inside my WIP, WIP consists of raw material, labor and overheads correct so now the raw material sitting inside my wap is 15000 rupees that is 15000 rupees worth of raw material gets blocked at the time of processing for a period of one month this is the meaning are you clear with this now wap is not just about raw material it is some processing happens so labor and overheads will also be incurred now what they are saying look at this please look at this very very carefully they are saying they are saying wages is generally 10 percentage of my sales value overheads is 20 percentage of my sales value fine now in a year in a year what is the total wage cost that i will be incurring can i say it is nothing but 60000 into 5 correct 60000 into 5 this is my overall sales value correct on that 10 percent so that is 30,000 rupees will be the labor cost that I will be incurring. inside my WAP in one particular cycle is the topic that we are talking about right now is the particular issue that we are talking about right now. Now what they are saying is sir I need one month of wages in advance itself no. 
correct because vedas also gets blocked for a period of one month no no this is not like raw material if you see on day one you incur some wages fine the first day you don't incur any wages actually the work has not yet started day one you startly incur is slowly start incurring some wages day two you incur some wages day three day four day five and the 30th day you incur the full wages and the entire wap entire uh, wap gets the entire raw material gets converted into fg or in other words labor and overheads unlike raw material they get accrued evenly during the period of my wap correct or not or in other words at the beginning of this one month i don't incur any labor and overhead costs correct at the end at the end of this one month i incur the entire labor and overhead cost correct for this entire raw material or in other words can i say can i say on an average on an average can i say 50 percentage is only the amount of cost that gets blocked into my business and can i say 50 percentage of one month which is going to be 0.5 month so i need 0.5 months equivalent of labor and overheads to be funded upfront in my business so that so that i can smoothly run my operations are you clear with this because labor and overheads are not are not incurred at the beginning itself if they are incurred every day every day so what we do since they are incurred evenly we take a simple average and we say it is not one month's requirement because the beginning of the period nothing was incurred at the end of the period you need to pay the entire labor and overheads so basically there is only half months 50 percentage of the labor and overheads is the funding that i need to bring in are you clear with this and that is what they have mentioned here it states so look at this thirty thousand into 0.5 divided by 12. If 30,000 is the labor cost for 12 months, how much will it be for 0.5 months? So how much is this 30,000 into 0.5 divided by 12? That gives you 1250. Similarly, similarly, it is for overheads. So overheads is 20 percentage of my overall sales value. Correct. So 20 percentage into 60,000 into 5 into 0.5 divided by 12, you get 2,500 rupees. So overall in my WAP stock, wow, how much in one cycle, in one working capital cycle, in WAP consists of 15,000 rupees worth of raw material, 1250 rupees worth of labor, 2500 rupees worth of overheads. Overall, overall, your WAP stock, the amount that gets blocked inside your WAP stock is going to be 18,750 rupees. Are you clear with this? Look at this. It is stated that it accrues evenly during the month. Thus, on the first day of each month, why month? Month is because the processing takes one month wap it would be zero and on the last day of the month it would include one month's labor cost 100 percent of the cost will be incurred on an average therefore it would be equivalent to half the month's labor cost so the funding that i need to bring is pertaining to half a month are you clear with this sir annually there is thirty thousand. i need no sir don't worry about this once this this is for one year i just need to bring for 0.5 months that is only a part of this particular cycle once this cycle gets over it will generate cash to fund the next cycle. Are you clear with this? So basically, I need to calculate the working capital requirement for one cycle alone. Once you are able to do it, automatically the cycle will keep on running. That's why we are calculating the working capital requirement for one particular cycle. Are you clear with this? Yes. So now with this, we have finished. The amount that needs to be blocked in your working WIP is 18,750. Clear with this, guys. So in raw material, what is the amount that gets blocked? 30,000 rupees needs to be blocked in your raw material. How much amount gets blocked in your WAP? 18,750 gets blocked in your WAP. Now, how about finished goods? They are saying finished goods, three months, three months, uh, three months cost of production. That is after producing, after, uh, see, first I had my raw material for how much? First I had my raw material for two months, correct? Here, only raw material cost was blocked, correct? Then for the next one month, raw material cost, plus labor cost, plus overhead cost, but labor and overheads were incurred proportionately. That is, they were incurred evenly. So I took only 50 percentage of labor and overheads, correct? Now, after this one month, can I immediately realize cash? No, it will enter into my FG area. It will enter into my FG area. And in my FG, it stays for how many days? It stays for a period of three months, correct? It stays for a period of three months. Am I right? Now, now for the period of next three months, what is the amount that gets blocked into my business? Material plus labor plus overheads. This time, everything is incurred upfront. That is, I have incurred all material labor overheads. The entire amount of labor and overheads also, not 50%. These are completed goods. Now, I don't incur anything now. 
I just I just keep it idly for the next three months. That is because of my business decision. So why would someone keep it idly, sir? Maybe, maybe you should, if you always go to actually some wholesale shop, not, they will have some ready stock. Why? Because demand can come at any point of time. You don't know. Fine. So if someone comes and asks you, and if you say, sorry, sir, I don't start, have stock, then it will not look nice. So you will have three months equivalent of every year's sale, three months worth of stock you will keep with yourself at any given point of time. That is the meaning of this. Correct. So now what is the amount that gets blocked in your FG? Material plus labor plus overheads. Everything is incurred now. Then for the next three months, I would have paid for my material labor overheads. All the costs have been incurred. For the next three months, the FG's value, the FG's value is going to be the extra amount that I need to bring into my business or, or in other words, in other words, now if you see, it's very simple. So now you tell me labor cost, raw material cost is how much? 60% of my sales. Labor is 10% of my sales. Overhead is 20% of my sales. 60 plus 10 plus 20. Overall, can I say the overall cost that I incur? The overall cost for every unit of completed completed product can I say is ninety percentage of my cost of sales? Yes. Now what is my what is my sales value? Sixty thousand into five rupees. Correct. On that ninety percentage is the cost I have incurred. Correct. So can I say sixty thousand into five into ninety percentage? Two lakh seventy thousand rupees. Two lakh seventy thousand rupees is the overall cost incurred for the entire period. Correct. But but. I just need to maintain three months worth of stock. Only that gets blocked into my business by way of FG. Correct. So 370,000 into three divided by 12. So how much is this going to be? 67,500. So now, now for the next three months, for the next three months, another 67,500 rupees needs to be introduced upfront into the business. So the working capital, how it works is for a period of two months, the raw material cost gets blocked. For the next one month, raw material plus evenly 50% of labor, 50% of overheads. Then for the next three months, entire raw material, labor and overheads gets blocked in your business. Are you clear with this? Yes. Now what happens? Now what happens? Now, now after this three months, immediately you will, you will sell it and can you get the cash immediately? No. What happens now? What happens now? Now you tell me. So first, what happened? So first, what happened? So here, now raw material, one second. So first raw material, how long it took for raw material? Two months. Then, then WIP took one month. Then FG took three months. Now after this three months, will you be able to realize the cash? No, no. Now you have your data's. Correct. What are they saying? How long will the debtors take to pay this money? They are saying the debtors, the time limit allowed for debtors is three months. So for the next three more months, for the next three more months, I will be having debtors. And for the next three months also, I will not get back my money. Or in other words, in other words, the next three months amount should also be funded by me only. Correct or not? Now, now what is the amount that gets blocked for the next three months? The value of the goods sold, yes or no? The value of the goods sold, now you tell me, you tell me, for every unit sold, for every unit sold, now, now for every unit sold, what is the sales price? What is the selling price? So for every unit sold, the selling price is 5 rupees, correct? Now this 5 rupees includes profit margin, yes or no? Now, now profit, is it an amount that I need to block? No, I need to, I'm blocking. What is the amount that gets blocked in my business? Only the cost, correct? Or in other words, can I say 60,000 units into 5 rupees into 90 percentage is the overall cost that I incur, cost of sales pertaining to the entire year, which is 2,70,000 rupees, correct? Yes, now 2,70,000 is the cost of sales made for the entire year. Now I need, I need to fund only to the extent of three months in my debtors with respect to my debtors to 2,70,000 into 3 by 12. So another 67,500 rupees gets blocked by way of debtors. Are you clear with this? Another 67,500 rupees gets blocked by way of debtors. 
where the total cost of sales is raw material plus wages plus overheads plus opening FG minus closing FG. Here, opening and FG, closing FG is not given. We can assume it to be equal. So now your overall value, overall total cost is going to be 2,70,000. This is where I said the format of cost sheet also you can use. Are you clear with this? So now, now basically what happens? What is the amount that get blocked in your raw material? Now, amount that gets blocked in your raw material is how much? Rupees 30,000, right? Yes, the amount that gets blocked in your raw material is how much? Rupees 30,000. Then, then, the amount gets that gets blocked in your WIP, how much is that? That is going to be 18,750. This also I need to bring into my business initially, 18,750. Then, what is the amount that gets blocked by way of FG? 67,500 rupees 67,500. Then what is the amount that gets blocked as debtors? The amount that gets blocked as debtors is going to be how much? So it's going to be 67,500 once again. It's going to be 67,500 once again. Are you clear with this? Are you clear with this? Now, now, now what happens? What happens? Apart from that, okay, let us also say the company requires some cash balance, all of this, fine. Now what happens? Now, now, there is an advantage for the company. What is it? Now, their creditors, their suppliers are ready to give two months of credit period. Now, their suppliers are indirectly funding my creditors for what? For raw material. They are saying, don't worry, you need not pay the cash immediately. You pay it after two months. But till now, what I have done? I have done it on the assumption that cash needs to be paid immediately based on that only raw material stock two months and all I have taken. Correct. So now from this, I will reduce. I will reduce the amount that gets funded indirectly funded by my creditors. Yes or no. This is indirectly funded. How can you say it's funded? They are not funding in cash. They are funding it in kind. They are giving you the raw material today. They are saying you pay it after two months. Are you clear with this? So now what happens here? What is the amount? that they are indirectly funding. What is the amount that they are indirectly funding? Very simple. Annual purchases will be what? 60,000 into 5. That is your total sales on that 60 percentage. 60 percentage on my annual sales is the overall purchase raw material cost. Correct or not? Yes. On that two months equivalent credit they are giving me. So into 2 by 12 that is indirectly 30,000 rupees of or my gross working capital is being funded by my creditors. Are you clear with this? So this 30,000 rupees, I am subtracting it. Why? Because to this extent, my creditors are saying they will finance me, finance it for me. This is not a cost. I'm saying about the amount of funding and investment required. Next, next. Now, they have also said something. They have also said something. What have they said? Look at this. Wages and overheads are paid on the first of each month for the previous month, which means now wages and overheads also these guys are saying, now you need not pay today. This month you extract all the work, you pay it in the first of next month. Or in other words, wages and overheads, we are getting one month credit, outstanding wages, outstanding overheads and all. We are getting one month credit, correct? Indirectly, these expenses are also getting funded. Yes or no? Now, wages is how much? Wage cost is how much? 10 percentage of my sales value, correct? So 10 percentage of my sales value into 1 by 12 is the funding. So 10 percentage of my sales value into 1 by 12, this is the amount that is actually being funded. I'm not saying this, they are bearing the cost. No, to the extent of this 2,500 rupees, it is being, these uh, workers are saying, we will take it later. That is, you need not pay me every day as and when I work. So I will work for one month, you pay me later. Because of this timing difference, I require a lesser funding of 2,500, correct? And then overheads is 20 percentage of my total sales into 1 by 12. It's going to be 5,000 rupees is the amount that gets indirectly funded by way of delaying payment in your overheads. Here it is assumed that the inventory level is uniform throughout the year. Therefore, opening inventory equals closing inventory. We've seen it. Now, now, statement of working capital requirement. What is the amount that I need to bring it initially itself into the business? And this will enter into the cycle and keep on rotating. Raw material, I need to bring in 30,000 rupees. We have already done this. 30,000. Yes. For WAP, I need to bring in 18,750. FG, 67,500. Data, 67,500. Wait. They have also said at any given point of time, the company should maintain a cash balance of 20,000 rupees. Correct. To meet any kind of contingencies. So the gross working capital that the company should meet, that is, they should definitely introduce 
two lakh three thousand seven fifty rupees. Apart from that investment in all the capital asset, they should have this money to run the show. Are you clear with this? Are you clear with this? Now what happens? Now what happens? Wait, wait. This can be funded by borrowing. Or, or, or this can also be funded through your current liabilities. So, to the extent of current liabilities, how much is getting funded? Creditors are indirectly funding for a period of 30,000 30, rupees. They are not bearing the cost since they are saying, I am accepting the payment after two months because of the time gap. You have 30,000 rupees of finance. So, from this, I have this gross, uh, this capital assets that is, sorry, your current assets, your gross working capital has been computed by not taking into account any of these uh, cushions that I have, correct? I'm assuming that the entire payment is being made as and when it is required. But from this, I am now reducing whatever credit period that I can avail. So in the creators, 30,000 rupees, outstanding wages, 2,500, outstanding overheads, 5,000. So out of this 2,3750, in, inside this, the current liabilities itself is funding me to the extent of 37,500. So now I need to introduce 1,66,250 rupees into my business. Are you clear with this? So now what happens? What happens right now? So 1,66,250. Now what will happen? So I will go to the bank. I will ask them working capital loan I want to the extent of 1,66,250. Let us say the bank is giving or you can also raise it through any of the long term sources of finance. You are getting it. Now you will introduce this into your, you will introduce this into your particular, you will introduce this into your uh, business, correct? Now, what is the working capital cycle for this company? Two months, one month, three months, three months, and then creditors give you uh, two months credit period, and then um, your uh, overheads, right? Your labor and overheads, you have about one month each. You Labor and overheads, you have about one month each, right? So basically, what do we have here? Two plus one, three, three plus three, uh, six plus three, nine minus three. This is going to be six months approximately. Fine, approximately six months is your working capital cycle. Now you will get back this amount after a period of six months. Now, when you get back this amount, you will get slightly more than this, slightly more than 1,66,250. Why? Because you will be getting along with the profit, correct? Now this extra amount, if you want, you can take it out of the cycle. But once again, for the next cycle, you should reinvest 166,250. Are you clear with this? And now what happens? It generates slightly extra than that. It keeps on going like this. Or in other words, in one year, in this case, in this example, if working capital cycle is six months, in one year, you have two cycles, correct? In a year, you have 12 months and one cycle is, uh, is for a period of six months. So in this case, in a year, you can have two working capital cycles. Are you clear with this? Are you clear with this? And then what happens? What happens? Since, since I'm able to generate more than the amount that I have actually invested. So what happens? This extra money that I have using this, I can service my loan also and balance whatever money I have. I can use it as my profit. Are you clear with this? So this is the main reason why companies or the economy itself is thriving without working capital borrowings, without working capital funding, no company can work. The banks are happy because they earn interest. Now, these companies are happy. The company, the businessmen, they are also happy. The entrepreneurs are happy because they get the money, right money in the time so that they are able to run the show. And then whatever profit that they generate out of that, they pay the interest balance amount they enjoy it for themselves. And this cycle keeps on going forever till the time the company permanently shuts down. So this amount which they are borrowing as working capital, this cannot be repaid after one cycle because it gets reinvested. So permanently this will remain in your business, correct? And every time, every time, parallelly you will also be servicing the loan by way of paying an interest. Are you clear with this? This is a very, very important understanding of working capital. So you cannot just directly jump into this and say, okay, current asset minus current liability, that's all. No. You need to understand under each components of current assets, how much is the amount that gets blocked. We are not calculating the cost. We are taking the annual cost on that. We are saying in one cycle, how much is the amount that gets blocked. So we are trying to find out how much is the amount of working capital investment required to that extent. I will have to finance it. Are you clear with this? So this is the overall story about this working capital initial, the first unit of working capital management. So with this, we have finished the first part, which is the most important part which is introduction to working capital management. So now let's go to the second unit, which is treasury and cash management. Now let's get into the second unit of this particular chapter, which is treasury and cash management. Now, what does this area talk about? 
this talks about how well you're going to manage your cash this exclusively talks about the cash component cash by cash i mean cash or bank clear fine so this cash and bank is one of the items in your current assets so we are just going to see how this cash and bank should get managed so basically they have given a lot of theoretical part in this but of course will be doing a comprehensive numerical problem in this particular area as well. So you should ensure that basically with respect to cash management, remember that you should not have too much of cash balance. You should not also have too less of a cash balance. Why? Too much of idle cash is a waste. Correct? Funds idly you are keeping it, which means what? It comes with a cost. It does not come free of cost. Correct? So too much of idle funds increases your cost, whereas too less of funds is also bad. Why it affects your liquidity whenever you have to make some payment you need to make it else it affects your reputation it affects your business so you should have adequate and sufficient cash balances are you clear for this so now how will i control this how will i maintain a control over this generally companies prepare something called as a forecast or a budget so this is what we are going to see in the next illustration so this illustration i have actually taken this from icai study material only so let's actually jump to ICA study material so, and uh, look, have a look at this particular problem. It's on page number 10.52. So in case you are from the new syllabus, don't worry, this exact sum is also there in the new syllabus study material for May 2024 and onwards. This sum is that a very, very good problem. See, the thing is actually, this sum looks big. The question is... You just need to have some common sense and logic. So I will just read out the question for you. And then and then this question, I will tell you how to approach this in the exam. Mark this as important. This question can be tested. Prachi Limited is a manufacturing company producing and selling a wide range of cleaning products to wholesale customers. The company has three suppliers and two customers. So this company Prachi Limited, they have three suppliers three creditors they need to pay and they have two debtors they will receive money from two people correct prachi limited relies on its cleared funds forecast to manage its cash for to manage its cash what do you mean by cleared funds forecast what do you mean by that now let us say i am depositing a check in the bank in my bank account i am depositing a check today correct now now for the check to be cleared and for my bank account to be credited with the money, let us say it takes two days. Correct? Now, now they are saying they will prepare this, all this cash budget and cash forecast only when the check gets cleared and when my bank account is reflecting the amount. They will not, they will not actually account for it or they will not prepare or they will not plan their budgets based on whenever they are receiving the check or whenever the transaction is happening they will they will actually consider this transaction has happened only when the bank accounts gets debited or credited or in other words only when the amount reflects in my bank account in my bank statement only then based on that only they prepare their cash budgets and all this is what they are saying that is the meaning of cleared funds forecast are you clear with this you are an accounting technician for the company and have been asked to prepare a cleared funds forecast for a period of for the period sa Saturday, that is 7th August, to Wednesday, that is 11th August. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So what we need to do, we need to prepare a cleared funds forecast. That is, that is the clear, uh, cleared cash budget, cleared cash and bank budget for each of the five days that they have asked us to do. Are you clear with this? Very simple, no? That is, when will you account, when will you actually consider things in your budget, receipts minus payments, that is going to be your excess or your deficit cash, correct? So when will you do this? You will account for it in a particular day only when you actually, only when your bank account is actually reflecting this particular transaction. Yes, very simple. Now, you are provided with the following information. So basically what we need to do, we need to prepare a cash budget for each of these five days but remember, there is only one condition here. What is it? You should record this particular transaction only when your bank statement reflects it. 
So now, now basically, just look at this. So what they have prepared? Prepared, they have prepared the cleared funds forecast for 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th and 11th. For each of these five days, they have prepared a forecast. Look at this. Receipts they have, minus payments they have and you will have what? You will have the excess of cleared excess over uh, cleared excess receipts over payment that is A minus B. You have this now. Now you need not know anything here. Why am I saying this in this particular question? What we will do since the question is big as and when we read a particular line item, we will go and fill up this particular column. Are you clear with this? In exam, you also follow this. First, you prepare this template and you just go on. It's nothing but preparing a cash budget for each of the five days. But the only condition is you can record the transaction only when it's reflects in your bank statement. We will see what it is. We will see what it is now first receipts from customers the company has how many customers we saw two customers correct right carefully listen we are preparing this budget for 7th 8th 9th 10th and 11th of august correct these are the five days so only the banking transaction that happens for each of these five days should be accounted by us clear so now now what happens here look now w limited is whom my customer prachi limited's customer the credit uh, period that I am giving for W Limited is one calendar month, correct? And for X Limited, there is no credit period, which means immediately they need to pay. W Limited generally makes the payment through a mode called BACS. It is like NEFT, IMPS, like that BACS is one payment method. You need not know all this. They themselves have given. BACS stands for Bankers Automated Clearing Service. And it is instantaneous, meaning what? The moment they make the payment, it will immediately come to my bank account. Are you clear? The moment my customer initiates the payment from his bank account, it will be credited instantly in my bank account. There's something to something similar to your GPay or IMPS. Immediately, immediate transaction will happen. Now, what they have given, the sales value made on 7th of August is given. The sales value made on 7th of July is also given. Are you clear with this? Now, now, for W Limited, you tell me, one month credit period we have or or in other words in other words during this period i am preparing budget only for 7th 8th 9th 10th 11th of august correct now during this period you tell me which is the amount that i will be receiving they have one month credit period so basically this 1 lakh 30 thousand of sales made one month before i will be receiving it on 7th of august correct or not how much is the amount i will be receiving this 1 lakh 30 thousand rupees today yes or no so basically what we can do we can immediately go to this statement and fill this up w limited on 7th august you receive how much 1 lakh 30 thousand rupees are you clear with this fill it up then and there fill it up then and there then now go up now x limited there is no such thing called as credit period which means immediate payment they need to pick now what happened what happened 7th of july sales they have given 7th of august sales they have given here 7th of july one month credit and all is not that this is not at all relevant why because it is outside my budget period now this sale of 180000 this is relevant now what they are doing so if i am making the sale on 7th august on 7th august itself x limited is giving me the check are you clear with this but wait what happens here x limited's check will be paid into prachi's limited bank account on the same day i will deposit the check the same day but it will clear on the third day following the payment now what happens here if if on 7th august if they deposit the check leave 7th august 8th 9th only on 10th this 1 lakh 80 thousand will reflect in my bank statement correct so now now what i will do here i will go here and i will put it as 7th nothing will happen 8th 9th nothing will happen on 10th only this amount of 1 lakh 80 thousand gets cleared in my bank account that's why we call it as cleared fund forecast are you clear with this which means which means which means for the period of these three days for the period of these three days 1.8 lakhs remains uncleared yes or no for the period of these three days yes i have received that is i would have accounted it in my cash book but but ideally i have not it this has not it been reflected in my bank statement or for these three days 7th 8th and 9th this 1 lakh 80 thousand is an uncleared amount correct yes so they are parking it under uncleared funds they are saying 
for the first three days, this 180,000 remains to be uncleared. Are you clear with this? So in this question, they have also asked us to prepare this uncleared funds. So we are actually mentioning that uh, uh, we are mentioning it properly here and there. So what we are doing for a period of the first three days, this 180,000 rupees remains to be uncleared. Are you cleared with this? Yes. Next, the next, next. What is the next transaction that they have mentioned? So this is about your receipts from customers. Next, payment to suppliers. We have three suppliers, right? These are payments. A limited, B limited, C limited. A limited, if I make the purchase today, I can pay him after one month. B limited, if I make the purchase today, I can pay him after three months. C limited, no credit, which means I need to pay immediately. Now, payment methods are all given. For A limited, standing order. B limited, uh, check. And C limited, check. Right? Now, look at this. Look at this. A limited, one month is the credit period. Correct or not? Which means, the purchases that I made one month back, I will be paying it today. Correct? Now, in our, we are preparing budget for what period 7th to 11th august correct so between 7th to 11th august which payments will come the purchase made on 7th of july correct or in other words this 55000 rupees yes or no so this 55000 rupees is actually the amount of payment that comes into one second so look at this look at this this is one calendar month right this is one calendar month so basically on 7th of august on 7th of august what will be the amount that they will be paying? So what happens? What is the relevant purchases that I will be making? So that is the one month before whatever was the purchase, 55,000 rupees that I need to pay. Correct or not? But wait, but wait, read this along. Prachi Limited has setting up, set up a standing order. Standing order means what? They have given an instruction to the bank for 45,000 rupees a month to pay for supplies from A Limited. So, Prachi Limited has told his, their bankers, they have told, look, every month pay flat to 45,000 rupees on 7th of every month you should pay. Correct? This payment will leave the Prachi's bank account on 7th of August. Every few months, an adjustment should be made and this adjustment is not made during this period. So, technically, from a cash flow perspective, during the time that I'm mentioning, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, during these five days, what is the amount of payment that goes from Prachi Limited to A Limited? It is not 55,000. It is 45,000 rupees only. Sir, how is it enough if I pay 45,000? The adjustment, the difference amount, they will pay it later. That adjustment does not happen during our budgeted period. Are you clear with this? So technically speaking, what happens here? Only 45,000 rupees moves out of my bank account, but it happens instantaneously. Are you clear with this? So this standing instruction, standing order of 45,000 rupees, it gets debited on what date? On 7th of August. So 7th of August, the amount that gets paid to A Limited is 45,000. So immediately go down and write down 45,000. Be very careful. It's not 55,000. 55,000 is actually the purchases made. Correct one month. That's what we will think. But look at the wordings. They have given some standing order and all. So whatever is the amount that they have told their bankers to pay, that amount will only move out of their bank account. Are you cleared with this? Yes. Then, then what happens? Then what happens? Now, now, now B limited check payment. So now what have they said? Prachi Limited will send out by post the checks to B and C Limited on 7th August. The amounts will leave its bank account on the second day following this day of posting. Now, what they are saying, now B Limited gives us two months credit period. So now what they are saying, so the purchase that I have made two months before, that will be paid today in 7th of August, correct? The purchases made on 7th of June will be paid today on 7th of August, right? Then for C Limited, no credit period, which means the, the purchases made today on 7th of August, that will only be paid today. Are you clear with this? So now this 75,000 and this 95,000, the checks will be posted on 7th of August, correct? Now what they are saying, will it be immediately debited, reduced from my bank account? No, they are saying it takes, it will be, it will be, the amounts will leave their account on the second day following the day of posting. So on 7th day post, 8th, 9th, on 9th, this two amounts, 75,000 to B limited, 95,000 to C limited, these two amount will actually be, will actually be what? These two amounts will be debited only on 
9th that is it will reduce from my bank balance only on 9th so i will issue the check on 7th but 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 this amount 75000 and 95000 respectively will be reduced from my bank only on 9th are you clear with this so what we will do so on 9th 75000 and 95000 is a payment that we are making but this was initiated on what on 7th so 75 plus 95 how much is this 190000 this 190000 sorry this is 170000 this 170000 remains to be an uncleared amount for the first two days on 7th as well as on 8th 1,70,000 remains to be what uncleared it has not yet gone out of my bank account but I had posted it in my books of accounts as a payment are you clear with this this 300 we will come to it maybe some other payment is there that needs to be added are you clear with this so this 1,70,000 remains to be uncleared for the two days since the check got issued next next what is the next thing that they have mentioned wages and salary for the month of July, for the month of August, weekly wages 12,000, 13,000, monthly salaries 56 and 59. Read this immediately. The factory wages are paid in cash wages weekly. They will be paid one week's wages on 11th of August for the last two weeks done in the, for the last week's work done in July. So basically, this 12,000 rupees weekly wages will be paid on what? 11th of August. Are you clear with this? It will be paid in cash. So ob obviously the amount will be, will go out of their funds immediately. So 12,000 rupees, 12,000 rupees will reduce on 11th of August. So just go down and say 12,000 rupees will be reduced on 11th of August. It comes under payment. Are you clear with this? Then what about the next figure? What about the next one? The offices, the office workers are paid salaries on a monthly basis under BACS. BACS is what? That instant automatic uh, payment. Salaries for the month of July will be paid on 7th of August. So this 56,000 rupees will move out of my bank account on 7th of August. Correct? So now on 7th of August, on 7th of August, 56,000 rupees will move out of my account by way of what? By way of salaries. Are you clear with this? Yes. Then, then. The next one, other miscellaneous expenses. Every Saturday evening, the petty cashier withdraws 200 rupees from the company's bank account for petty cash. The money leaves Prachi's bank account right away, straight away. So basically, Saturday evening, when is the Saturday coming here? 7th. Every Saturday, this petty cashier, the petty cashier is withdrawing 200 rupees from the account. So immediately it gets reduced. Are you clear with this? Are you clear with this? Yes, this 200 rupees gets reduced every, uh, every Saturday, right? Fine, that's a payment that goes out. Now, the room cleaner is paid 30 rupees from the petty cash every Monday morning. Very important. Now, what is this? Now, this petty cash, 200 rupees, is withdrawing and keeping with the cashier. Correct? I have reduced this 200 from my funds. Now, from this 200 that the cashier has within in his hands, out of this, he is paying 30 rupees, 20 rupees, whatever it is. Now, this will not impact my bank balance. Why? Already I have withdrawn 200 rupees. Out of that only I am spending something. So, obviously, it will not impact my bank account now. When I withdraw 200 rupees, that will impact my bank account. From the amount withdrawn, if I am spending it, how will it impact my bank account? Are you clear with this? We are calculating the cleared funds forecast. Are you clear with this? Yes. Next, stationery will be ordered by telephone on Sunday, 8th August to the value of 300 rupees. This is paid for by the company using their debit card and such payments are generally seen to leave the company account the next working day. So on 8th August, I made a purchase of stationery to the extent of 300. But when will it impact my bank account? 9, 9th August only. So what happens on 9th of August, there is a payment of 300. But wait, this payment was initiated on 8th. So on 8th, it remains to be what? It remains to be uncleared payment. That is why here the total uncleared payment is 170 plus 300. Are you clear with this? Are you clear with this? Yes. So this is the meaning of it. This is the meaning of this. Next. Five new softwares will be ordered over the internet on 10th of August at a total cost of 6,500. A check will be sent out on the same day. The amount will leave Prachi's bank account on the second day following the date of posting. So if I make the payment on 10th, that is if I issue a check on 10th, 11th, 12th, only on 12th, it will move out from my bank account. Now, you tell me, I am preparing this budget only up to 11th, correct? So basically, it will not impact my budget 
for a period of 7th to 11th August. Are you clear with this? So basically, it will not impact my clear funds for up to 11th August. Correct? Because the amount gets reduced from my bank account only on the 12th. Yes, but wait, the 6,500 rupees was a transaction initiated on 10th. So for 10th and 11th, this amount of 6,500 rupees remains as an uncleared fund that got uncleared fund payment. Yes or no, that is one uncleared payment. So this 6,500 rupees remains as an uncleared payment for the last two days, that is 10th and 11th of August. Are you clear with this? Yes, so this is what they have given and then the balance of Prachi's bank account will be 2 lakh rupees on 7th of August. Opening balance is 2 lakh rupees. This represents both the book balance and the cleared funds. Prepare a cleared funds forecast for a period of Saturday, 7th August to 11th August, inclusive using the information provided. Show clearly the uncleared funds float each day. So, day wise, we have seen how much amount has received, how much amount has been paid. So, every day, we are just calculating the difference between the two. So, 1 lakh 30 minus 1 lakh 1200. So, excess amount, how much? Day 1, that is on 7th of August, I have how much excess? 28,800. The opening balance is already 2 lakhs. This is given in the question. So, the cleared closing balance is 2 lakh 28,800. Yes or no? Now, this closing balance will become the opening balance of the next day. In the next day, there is no receipts, no payments, no transactions. So, that will automatically become the closing balance. Fine. This closing balance will become the opening balance for the next day. Yes. In the next day, what happened? There was no receipts, but there was only payment of 1,70,300. So, minus 1,70,300. The closing balance will be 58,500. This 58,500 becomes the opening balance for the next day. In the next day, if you see, there is only a receipt and no payment to the extent of 1,80. So, 1,80 plus 58,500. The closing balance for the next day is going to be 238,500. This becomes the opening balance for the last day, 11th August. So now for the last day, if you see no receipts, but only payment. So minus 12,000 is the amount that has gone outside the bank account. So 238,500 minus 12,000. So the clear fund balance as on 11th August, the last day is going to be 226,500. Are you clear with this? And then the uncleared float also, we are actually tracking here 180 minus 170. So on the first day, you have 10,000 rupees of uncleared float, second day 9,700, 9, the third day 1,80,000, on the fourth day minus 6,500, sixth day minus 6,500. What is the meaning of all this? To the extent of net amount of 10,000 rupees, net amount of 10,000 rupees, so I have, I am yet to receive, that is, that is, the transaction has been initiated, but my bank account is not yet created with respect to 10,000 rupees, it is uncleared fund, are you clear with this, uncleared fund, then on the second day, if you see, still I am yet to receive 9,700 rupees, it is a transaction that has been initiated, but it has yet to be reflecting in my bank account, then on the third day, if you see, 180,000 rupees, I am about to receive, but it is not yet reflecting in my bank account. On the fourth day, if you see, actually 6,500 rupees of payment I should have made, but it is actually, it, the payment was initiated, but it is not yet reflected in my bank statement. And on the fifth day also, the same 6,500 rupees of transaction which was initiated, but still not reflecting in my books. This is only being mentioned here. So, th this is actually, these amounts are recorded in my books but they are not reflecting in my bank statement. This is similar to the BRS that we do. So the clear funds plus the uncleared funds gives you the total book balance. So 2,28,800 is the actual balance that I have in my account plus 10,000 rupees. I know that I will be receiving it in the next one or two days. That's because of my clearing difference and all. So the total book balance is this cleared balance plus my uncleared fund float. It's going to be 2,38,800. Here it's going to be 3,38,500. Uh, sorry, 238500, 238500. Look at this. For the fourth and fifth day, I have a cleared balance of 238500, but, but, but. I am I am about to pay 6500. I've initiated the transaction, which is not reflected in my books. So the net balance is only 232000. And on the last day, also the balance is 220000. Are you clear with this? So basically, the sum is actually easy provided you know what you are doing and how you do it. So there is actually a way in which you do the question. So once you read this question, what you can do is quickly give it a glance once and then prepare this template as and when you read a paragraph fully, just go and do the posting so that by the time you finish reading the question itself, you will be done with about 80% of the problem and this entire sum will be over. Clear with this, if at all this comes, this income for a 10 mark question and 
and this is nothing but logic common sense just because the sum is big some students find it difficult so please don't uh, fall into the trap of feeling that the sum is difficult and all it's pretty much a straightforward question are you clear with this are you clear with this yes so with this we have finished the cash management of course in cash management it's more to do with how do you manage your cashes and how do you manage your cash and all that Fine, there are also different, uh, a few uh, other problems, but in this marathon, I wanted to cover the important aspect that is covered in our uh, cash management. So that is what we have seen now. So now let's move to the next unit. Let's now move to the next unit. So now let's move to the third unit in this particular chapter, which is inventory management, right? So technically this uh, segment of uh, the chapter is actually covered in costing it's covered in your cost and management accounting there is a concept called as eoq economic order quantity and there is a concept called as stock levels okay so eoq actually is nothing but how much quantity should i place an order for so every time i place an order from the supplier how many units i should place an order for and the stock levels has something like minimum level, maximum level, reorder level. Reorder level means when I should place an order. EOQ stands for whenever I'm placing an order, for how much quantity I should place an order. Now, why are all these things coming under working capital management? Because this squarely comes within the ambit of inventory management. Now, similar to any other component of working capital, inventory, we should maintain adequate inventory. We should not have too much of inventory why if you have too much of inventory you are actually blocking your funds on idle inventory inventory is a dead stock correct if you have too much of non-moving stock it means that you need to bring in more capital and every rupee that you bring into the business for your working capital it has a cost associated with it it should also not be too less why if it is less then you will run out of your order so whenever you're getting an order since if you don't have the stock then you will not be able to you will not be able to um, you know, you will not be able to produce the products because if your raw material, you don't have the stock, how can you start your production and honor your commitments? Are you clear with this? So basically, you should not have too much of stock. You should also not have too less of stock. There should be an optimum stock that you need to maintain. Are you clear with this? So that's why they've also given inventory management has been discussed in detail in chapter two. That is material cost chapter. Clear? So now we will just do one question. In this particular area technically it is covered in costing nothing related to your financial management it's covered in costing but anyways i will just do this sum just so that you can get a hang of it now problem number three marvel limited uses a large quantity of salt in its production process annual consumption is sixty thousand tons over a 50 week working year so every year they are consuming sixty thousand tons of salt it costs 100 rupees to initiate and process an order and the delivery follows two weeks later. So if I place an order today, after two weeks only the delivery will happen. Storage costs with the salt are estimated at 0.1 rupees per ton per annum. And so this is basically your carrying cost. Yes, this is basically your cost of holding it, holding cost or carrying cost, right? The current practice is to order twice a year when the stock falls to 10,000 tons identify an appropriate ordering policy for Marvel Limited and contrast it with the cost of the current policy. Now, there is a concept in material cost called as EOQ, economic order quantity, right? Now, in case, in case you do not know this, you can refer the costing marathon video that we have uploaded in that in part one itself, I have uh, discussed in detail about this material cost concept. You can just go and watch it. It's available on YouTube on our channel, right? So now in this EOQ, we would have learned what is what do you mean by EOQ? Economic order quantity. How many units should I place an order for so that my overall cost is kept minimum? The logic for this formula and all is explained. So the EOQ is actually root of 2 into A into O divided by C, where A stands for annual raw material consumption, that is 60,000 tons, correct? O stands for ordering cost per order, that is rupees 100, and C stands for carrying cost per unit per annum, which is rupees 0.10. So how many units should I place an order for 
root of 2 into A, that is annual requirement, 60,000 into O, 100 divided by 0 0.10. So, if you calculate this, you will get how much? 10,954. So, it is the best, the best uh, optimum quantity is actually 10,954. So, every time you place an order, you should place an order for how many tons of raw material? 10,954 tons of raw material, which means in a year, how many number of times you will order? Overall, I need 60,000 tons. Every time I am placing an order, I will place an order for 10,954 uh, 10, tons, which means in a year, I will place an order for representatively 5.5 times. So, the number of orders that happens in a year is 5.5 times. Are you clear with this? Yes. Then, then, then. Now, what is your reorder level? What is your reorder level? So, basically, what do you mean by reorder level? So, reorder quantity that is EOQ stands for how many kgs to order, whereas reorder level means when to order, correct? So, reorder level is nothing but, reorder level is nothing but, so what is your reorder level? So, reorder level is your lead time into consumption per day or per week of lead time, correct? Yes, all these things are covered in costing actually, right? So, what is the lead time that it generally takes here? What is the lead time that he generally takes? He takes, he takes, if I place an order today, it takes him two weeks to deliver the product. Yes or no? So, they have given it here. So, it takes two weeks to deliver the product. Yes. So, it takes two weeks to deliver the product. And, and what is the consumption per week? So, 60,000 is the annual consumption and in a year, there are 50 weeks. So, basically, I should make sure that the moment my stock touches this level, I should pick the phone and place an order for how many kgs? For 10,954 kgs or tons. Are you clear with this? So, what is the reorder level? The reorder level is 2,400. So, what do you mean by 2,400? The moment my stock balance is are reaching at 2,400, I will pick the phone and I will place an order for... 10,954 tons. Are you clear with this? And when we do this, automatically your overall cost will be minimum. This is what the concept of EOQ says. So, the total cost at optimum policy. Optimum policy means what? If your order quantity is at EOQ, that is 10,954. So, what is your total cost? Total cost is holding cost plus ordering cost. So, what is your holding cost? So, holding cost is nothing but average inventory. Average inventory into C, that is carrying cost per unit per annum, yes or no. Now, average inventory, what is the average inventory that you will keep? What is the average inventory that you will keep? Average inventory, now if you see here, at every point of time, C, if you place an order, you will get for 10,954 units, correct? So, by the time, by the time it reaches, by the time it reaches, the, the delivery by the time the supplier delivers your product to you, again, you will get this 10,954 units or in other words, or in other words, at one point of time in a period, there will be 10,954 kgs in your tons sitting in your warehouse. At some point, there will be zero. So, the average inventory will be half of 10,954. Yes, or in other words, Half of order quantity, half of EOQ is your average inventory. So, 1 by 2 into 10,954. This is going to be your average inventory into carrying cost per unit per annum. It is going to be how much? Into, into 0.1. Are you clear with this? So, this is going to be your overall holding cost or carrying cost. So, 0 0.1 into 10,954 divided by 2. Why this divided by 2? This is nothing but average inventory into carrying cost per unit per annum. Then, what is your ordering cost? Ordering cost per order into number of orders. So, what is the number of orders? Annual requirement. That is, I need 60,000 tons every year. Every time I place an order, I place an order for 10,954 tons. So, which means 60,000 divided by 10,954. I am placing 5.5 orders in a year. And every time I place an order, I incur a cost of 100 rupees. Yes or no? So, basically, the ordering cost will be 100 into 60,000 divided by 10,954. So, basically, basically, it is going to be 547.7 uh, plus 547.74. So, your overall, overall cost is going to be 1,095 if, if you are maintaining, if you are placing an order 
at your economic order quantity level. If you are following the economic order quantity, your overall cost will be 1095. Are you clear with this? Now what they are given. Currently what the company is doing, the company is only ordering twice a year and that too when the stock balance falls at 10,000 tons. So which means twice a year, which means every time they place an order, in a year they place an order only two times. So every time they place an order, they place an order for how many tons? 30,000 tons. Yes or no? So in one order that is 30,000 tons and like that in a year they are ordering twice. Correct? Yes. So now if now are they following the EOQ? No. EOQ says every time you place an order, you should place an order only for 10,954 tons. Correct. Whereas, whereas they are placing an order for 30,000 tons. So obviously, since they are deviating from EOQ, they will be incurring more cost. This is what we saw in material cost chapter, right? That is exactly given. Nothing new that we are learning. Every single thing is the same. So now what they have given here. So to compare the optimum policy with the current policy, the average level of stock under the current policy must be found. Why we should find, calculate the average stock under the current policy? Yes. Now, now what is my what is my holding cost and what is my ordering cost holding cost is average inventory average inventory into into carrying cost per unit per order what is my ordering cost ordering cost is nothing but ordering cost is nothing but number of orders number of orders in a year multiplied by ordering cost per order yes or no now now Holding cost is average inventory into the carrying cost per unit per annum. What is the carrying cost per unit per annum? The carrying cost per unit per annum is 0.1. Now you tell me, you tell me what is going to be my average inventory. Now they are saying, what they are saying is, look at this. I will place an order every time my stock reaches 10,000 tons. Correct? Right? So I will place an order every time my stock reaches 10,000 tons. Yes or no? My stock reaches 10,000 tons. Now, it takes, it takes two weeks for the person to deliver it. Yes or no? So, before the time, before the delivery happens, so I will pick the phone call and the moment my stock balance is 10,000, I will pick the phone call. By the time he delivers, my stock balance will be reducing by how much? So, two weeks consumption. Every week, every, in a year, I will consume 60,000. In a year, I will consume 60,000 tons, which means on an average, every week I will consume how much? 60,000 divided by 50, right? Like the two weeks it takes. So 60,000 divided by 50 into two. So by the time the delivery happens, I would have already consumed how much? 2,400 tons. Yes or no? Yes or no? So technically at the time of delivery, my stock balance would have reduced to how much? 7,600. Yes. Now this guy is going to deliver. How many kgs? 30,000 kgs. We just found out they are going to place an order only for two uh, two times in a year. So 30,000 kgs. So now the stock gets replenished by 30,000 kgs. So what is the maximum stock that you will be having? 7,600 is the minimum stock. What is the maximum stock? It's going to be 37,600. Yes, because plus 30,000. It's going to be 37,600. So the average stock will be the maximum stock plus the minimum stock divided by two. So your average stock is going to be how much? <clears throat> your average stock, that is a simple average way of computing or, or you can also do it as minimum stock, minimum stock plus one by two of order quantity. I told you there are two formulas to cal calculate average stock in costing we've seen. Yes, so what are the two formulas to calculate uh, um, average stock? One is actually a simple average that is minimum plus maximum by two that is arithmetically correct but practically not correct whereas the other formula is very logical minimum minimum plus evoq by two that is that is the fl stock fluctuation will happen only above the minimum level so you take the average of my evoq so what is the evoq in this case order quantity what is the order quantity thirty thousand so thirty thousand divided by two plus the minimum stock of 7,600. So the average stock gives you 22,600. So 22,600 into 0.1. This is going to be your overall carrying cost or holding cost. Then what is going to be your ordering cost? It is going to be number of orders, that is two, into ordering cost plus 
per order. So the overall cost, if if I am placing an order twice in a year, is going to be 2460. Whereas if I follow EOQ, it is just going to be 1095. So how much extra cost I'm incurring because I'm deviating from EOQ. So the difference between that 2460 minus minus 1095. So that gives you how much? 1365 rupees per year. So every year I am incurring an extra cost of 1365 because I am deviating from my EOQ. So it is better to follow EOQ. Are you clear with this? Technically, this entire discussion is not even pertaining to financial management. It is exact copy paste of your, uh, it is exact copy paste of your costing. In fact, in the new syllabus, what they have done is, so in the old syllabus, at least they had mentioned all these things and they had given some illustration. In new syllabus, what they have done from May 2024 onwards, they have just mentioned in a single line, they have mentioned refer material cost chapter in your costing. So this is nowhere, uh, you know, they have not mentioned separately things here. They have just said refer that costing syllabus. So they have just mentioned this as unit three management of inventory, refer your costing syllabus, your material cost chapter. That's all they have done. They have just mentioned this part alone. Are you clear with this? In old syllabus, at least they have just mentioned a few things and given a few illustrations. That doesn't mean that these questions will not be tested. So please have that in your mind. This is equally applicable for new syllabus students as well. Clear? So with this, the small area inventory management is also so over. Now, let's get started with the unit 4 in this working capital management chapter, which is management of receivables. So basically, receivable stands for what? Your debtors. Predominantly, it stands for your debtors. Of course, bills receivable also, right? So the people who owe some money to the firm, to the uh, particular company is called as what? Uh, they are called as uh, debtors or receivables. Now, now, what is the point here? What is the point of discussion here? Now, there is some money that gets blocked in this debtors category. It is a part of current assets. I am making the sale today, right? But let us say I am getting the payment after two months. I am getting the payment after two months. So, for this two months, there is some amount that gets blocked by way of debtors, correct? So, now this needs to be taken care of by the company. Right. So what they can do is they can have a look at their credit terms. They can have a look at their credit terms and they can be more cautious about it. Now, what they can do is they can maybe give a credit term of three months or maybe they can give a credit term of two months or they can maybe give a credit term of one month as the case may be. So they can evaluate whichever option is the best for them. So what is there in evaluating this? If you give more credit term, what will happen? The chances of your sales will be more. More people will be willing to buy from you. But but what is the problem if you give more credit term? The chances of bad debts is also more. Why? Because now they are taking more time. People are coming to you because you are giving more time. These people can be intentional defaulters also. The chances of bad debts is more. That is number one. And also more the credit period. Now more will be the amount funds blocked in it by way of working capital and hence the cost associated to working capital will also be more. So basically, if you if you increase your if you increase your credit term to your debtors, the advantage is you can improve your sales, but the disadvantage is the chances of bad debts will be more. Also, also, there will be a cost associated with the funds that get blocked, more the credit period, more the capital that gets blocked under working capital. Are you clear with this? So what the company needs to do, they need to do some cost benefit analysis for each of these things, for each of the methods, for each of these three proposals, in our case, the three proposals, and they can find out whichever is that method that gives them the maximum net benefits, they can go for that particular option. Are you clear with this? So aspects of uh, management of data, basically it's about the credit policy. Fine. What, what is the credit terms I should give them? One month or two months or three months, as the case may be. Credit analysis, that is, at the time when I am choosing my customer, I should see whether this guy is going to repay me or not, whether he's credit worthy or not. The credit worthiness should also be seen. This involves due diligence or reputation check of the customers with respect to that credit worthiness. Are you clear with this? And then control of receivables. You should have a dedicated team to follow up on the payments and all that and ensure that this guy makes the payment on time. Are you clear with this? So following up with the data and all that. Now, now, 
in this context in this context there is a very very interesting area called as factoring there is an interesting area called as factoring sir what is this concept of factoring now now let us say let us say a company a limited there is a company a limited they have sold some goods on credit to a customer right the credit period is let us say 3 months let us say 3 months now a limited what they need to do they need to wait for 3 months at the end of 3 months this customer will pay to a limited and this transaction gets complete there is an other alternative what is the alternative this is similar to kind of similar to the bills discounting but here it is not a bills receivable it's a normal data Okay, right? it can also be a bills receivable. Now, what this A Limited will do? It made the sale today. Immediately today itself, it goes to a person called as a factor. What this guy will do is, he will say, "I am ready to buy your data," and he will pay A Limited an upfront amount. He will pay A Limited an upfront amount, but he will charge some commission. This is similar to the discount that banks will charge. Why is he charging a commission? Because because later on this factor he will go and collect the payment from the customer. So the customer will now not make the payment to A Limited. The customer will make the make will make the payment to factor. But after three months, but this factor pays A Limited today itself. So he is technically funding A Limited for the next three months. for which he charges something called as a commission and this concept is called as factoring now now every time when there is actually a debtor and when you have a possibility of factoring you should see whether this factoring is beneficial for you or not sir how does factoring benefit me sir always i should pay this guy a commission yes but what happens is you need not incur some administrative cost with respect to following up with the customer you need not have a separate team to actually go and follow up with the customer and all that all these things this factor will take care of are you clear with this in fact at times the factor will also take care of the risk of the bad debts suppose there is any bad debts this factor himself will bear it he will not pass it on to a limited for accordingly his commission will be more so if the factor is bearing the bad debts it's called as a non recourse factor so if the factor is not bearing the bad debts he says no no if there is a bad debt then i will catch a limited it's called as a recourse factor so non recourse factor will bear the bad debts obviously more the risk he will expect more commission and all that are you clear with this and this concept is very similar to the bills discounting instead of this factor in bills discounting we have the bank which discounts the bill upfront instead of paying 100 rupees they will pay 90 rupees to the uh, a limited and they will recover 100 rupees after 3 months something like that yes so this difference is the earnings for the factor but they are taking the risk of what they are taking the risk of uh the bad debts in case they are a non recourse factor and one more thing is that they take care of all the administrative cost with respect to collecting the money from the debtor are you clear with this in this context we should see whether it is worthwhile going for the factor or not so that is what we are going to discuss in this segment a factoring firm question number 4 a factoring firm has credit sales of 360 lakhs right and its average collection period is 30 days so what they are saying this is actually not a factoring firm it's a normal firm okay it's a normal company they have credit sales of 360 lakhs in a year and its average collection period is how much 30 days so in a year they have how much sales 360 so what is one operating cycles what is one operating cycles data's value into 30 divided by 360 so can we say that in one cycle in one cycle they have a debtor balance of 30 lakhs or in other words in other words the amount that gets blocked by way of debtors is going to be 30 lakhs for this company the finance controller of the company estimates that the bad debt losses are approximately 2 percentage of the credit sales credit sales the firm currently spends 1 lakh 40000 annually on the debtors administration like tele or uh, telephone the calls and uh, sending recovery agents and all that this cost comprises of look at this telephonic bills fax bills along with the salaries of staff members and these are avoidable costs when can they be avoided if you are appointing a factor now a factoring firm has offered to buy the firm's receivable now what this factoring firm says look 
30 lakhs is your receivables we will buy it from you meaning what we will buy this we will be the owners of this 30 lakhs we will pay you some money today itself at the end of the credit period we will collect it at the end of 30 days we will collect it from the debtors if there is any bad debts we will bear it are you clear with this how do we know they are bearing it they are saying it's all avoidable cost clear factoring firm is offered to buy the firm's receivable the factor will charge one percentage commission and will pay an advance against the receivable on an interest of 15 percentage per annum after withholding 10 percentage as reserve analyze what the firm should do assume 360 days in a year now what is this now now very very beautiful calculation time and again students make a mistake here maybe if this can come this can come for a five mark question the other areas in receivable management are fairly simple and straightforward this is the place where generally students find it difficult and i think this is the only question uh, given in your illustration regarding your factoring so please uh, pay attention to this now what they are saying is what they are saying is first what is my debtor's value my debtor's value is 30 lakhs correct now now this guy factor he says he says i am going to charge you one percentage of the debtor's value as commission so what is his commission his commission is going to be thirty thousand rupees now he is also telling one more thing right so 30 lakhs is the value of debtors for which he is willing to purchase from you now he's saying look that entire 30 lakhs i will not pay you today i will withhold 10 percentage for what it is going to be for my security purpose. I will withhold this. This 10 percentage I am withholding is the cost. No, no, no. After this 30 days, I will pay it back to you the moment I collect it from your data. Clear? So the factoring firm says 10 percent alone I will withhold. So for safety purpose, at the end of 30 days, the balance 10 percent, I will release the payment. So initially, I will release only 90 percentage of the payment. Are you clear with this? So basically, the factoring commission is how much? 1 percentage reserve how much amount is he withholding 10 percentage of 30 lakhs it's going to be 3 lakh rupees so now what this factor says is so now today i am i am purchasing the data so what the how much 30 lakhs from the company correct now from this 30 lakhs i will withhold 3 lakh rupees that is reserve correct so balance 27 lakhs i will pay no he's saying my commission you need to pay me 30 000 that i that also i will deduct it upfront so this 30 000 it needs to be paid by this company to the factor correct so now what the factor says is i need to pay you 30 lakhs minus 10 percentage i am putting it as my cushion minus 30 000 minus 30 000 that also i will just reduce it and the remaining amount and the remaining amount only i am just going to remit it back to you so basically he says three lakh thirty thousand rupees he will withhold up front are you clear with this that is thirty thousand rupees with respect to the factoring commission and three lakh rupees with respect to reserve he says this three lakh thirty thousand up front i will not give you this i will keep it with myself because thirty thousand is anyways the money that you need to pay to me three lakhs is i am keeping it for security purpose after 30 days the moment i recover money from the customer i will pay this back to you are you clear with this now now not just that not just that he is saying one more thing now technically how much is the amount that he is going to release for funding 30 lakhs minus 3.3 lakhs correct so this is technically how much guys this is going to be 26 lakhs 70 thousand so he will release 26 lakhs 70 thousand to him today itself today you have made the sale today so you are going to a factor the factor says i will pay you 30 lakhs but wait i will withhold 3 lakh rupees pertaining to my reserve 30000 rupees pertaining to my commission so i am going to fund you today itself i will pay you 26 lakh 70000 correct but wait he says this 26 lakh 70000 i am funding to you today it is it is going to be against an interest of 15 percentage why so this guy is saying come on i am going to bear your risk correct i am going to bear your risk not just that for 30 days i am going to finance you if you are able to if you want to do it by yourself you need to incur some extra cost plus wait for 30 days Whereas if you're doing it through me, you just need to pay me a commission. And of course, for the 30 days, whatever I'm funding you, that portion, you need to pay me some interest. So now how much amount is this factor funding him? Today, sir, he's ready to pay 26 lakh 70,000. So what is the interest applicable on that? He's going to fund only for 30 days, correct? So, so this is going to be, this is going to be 26 lakh 70,000 into 15 percentage into 30 divided by 360. So how much is this going to be? So 26 lakh 70,000 into into 0.15 into 
30 upon 360. So this is going to be 3,375 rupees. This is payable as interest. So he's saying from this amount that I'm going to disperse to you, the interest also I will deduct it upfront. So the net amount that I will release today is going to be 26,36,625. Are you clear with this calculation? So basically we found the data's value. This entire value will the factor give it today? No. For cushion purpose, for the safety purpose, he will withhold 10 percentage, that is 3 lakh. Then he is charging a commission, that also he will withhold at the time of payment itself. So 3 lakh 30 thousand. So the net amount he is ready to release or fund is 26.7 lakhs. On this 15 percentage per annum for 30 days, he will compute the interest. That also he is deducting upfront. So all his fees and all he is deducting upfront, it fees and interest and net amount only he will release it. To the company are you clear with this so the company will get today net amount the company gets is 26 lakh 36 thousand 625 are you clear with this yes now 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 because the company goes to the factor what is the benefit benefit number one the company can save on what the cost of administration they had given all this fax and all this admin staff and all one lakh forty thousand i can save yes then then the company can also save what the cost of bad debts yes so two percentage on annual sales is generally my bad debts every time i make a sale i am going to repeat this so once in every 30 days this again i am going to make what this 30 lakhs rupees worth of sale correct or not so 30 lakhs again and again every 30 days i do so in a year i will actually factor the entire 360 lakhs worth of sale at a time i will factor only how much 30 lakhs but anyways it gets factored again and again in a year so obviously what happens here what happens here is so here the entire bad debts cost this can also be saved 2% on 360 lakh 7 lakh 20 thousand so how much amount you are able to benefit because you are going for the factor 8 lakh 60 thousand but wait is there a cost associated with it yes there is a cost associated with it so what is the cost there are only two costs what are the cost here factoring commission and interest charges remember that reserve amount is not a cost he will release it after 30 days so don't worry about it that is just he is he withholding it for security purpose. Now, factoring commission, how much is it? How much is it? Commission is 30,000 rupees, correct? 30,000 rupees. But remember, this 30,000 rupees is pertaining to one cycle of 30 days, correct? In a year, they keep on doing it. So basically, 30,000 rupees is for 30 days. How much is it for 360 days? Because the moment 30 days gets over, now, again, this company will go to a factor, the new data will come for them the next 30 days, they will fund. Like this, it keeps on moving. So technically, throughout the year, they will be funded by this factor, 30,000 upon 30 into 360. Annually, the factoring commission is how much? 3,60,000 rupees, correct? Similarly, the interest charge is also 33,375 that is pertaining to one period, that is pertaining to 30 days. Like that, how many days are there in a year? 360 days. So 33,375 upon 30 into 360. Uh, so that gives you how much? 4 lakh and 500. So what is your total cost that you incur, extra cost you incur because of factoring? 760,500. What is the total benefit you get because of factoring? 860,000. So the net benefits the firm is 99,500. Or in other words, if you do this factoring, if you go for this factors method of funding, you will gain a net amount of 99,500. So is it worthwhile to go for factoring or not? Yes. Since the savings to the firm exceeds the cost of the firm on account of factoring, the proposal is acceptable. Are you clear with this? So basically this factoring is nothing but almost similar to the bill discounting concept, discounting of bills of exchange. But here it is done by a third party called as factor for which he charges a commission and also charges an interest and all these things he deducts upfront. Are you clear with this? But for that, there is no uh, difficult area in this particular uh, concept of receivables management. So with this, with this, we have finished this part as well of receivables management. So now let's move to the next uh, unit of discussion. Now, this is unit 5, which is management of payables, that is creditor. Now, now, now you tell me, these guys, the creditors of a company, they technically fund you, they technically fund you, but not by giving you money, but they fund in kind, that is, they sell the products today and they are ready to accept the payment at a later date, correct? So indirectly, this is also a source of working capital finance only. Now, now with respect to management of payables, what is the issue here? What is the issue? What needs to be done here? So there are some costs for availing the trade credit. 
Now, if I go for a trade credit, that is, if I want to purchase on credit, if I want to make purchase credits, it is actually not free of cost. It comes with some cost. What is it? Number one, price. Now, if you see, if you paid by cash today and purchase, or against that, if you if you actually purchase something on credit, there will definitely be a price difference. What is it? So basically, if you pay today, if you pay today and purchase it, this guy, the supplier will give you a discount. Why? Because you are making the payment today itself and you are carrying it. Yes, you are taking the goods, cash and carry model. Correct. Suppose you are saying I want three months credit and all. So this guy will not give you the discount. So technically, technically, you are losing out on the discount because you are going for a credit period. Are you clear with this? So because of going for credit, there are some prices like this one. The first one is a change in the price. Number two, suppose if you do not keep up with your commitment, you are saying that you will pay after 30 days, but you are not paying after 30 days. It amounts to loss of goodwill. So this is basically a qualitative factor. This does not, this cannot be quantified in monetary terms, but yes, this is, this will result in cost of goodwill loss of goodwill then then since you are having a lot of suppliers now you need to have a separate team and incur of some administrative costs and of course there are some conditions that you need to abide by sometimes most of the uh, suppliers insist that for availing the credit facility the order should be of some minimum size or even on a regular basis so just like that and all they will not give credit facility for every customer so the suppliers will say you need to purchase a minimum of so much or you should purchase every every month you need to purchase so all these kind of conditions they will do but but you know, there are some costs of not taking the credit. That is, these are some benefits of taking credit. What are the benefits of purchasing on credit? The first one is impact of inflation. Assume there is no concept of credit purchase. Now, what will happen? You can purchase only when you have the money, correct? Let us say in the month of Jan, you wanted to purchase something, but you didn't have the money. Now, you got the money somewhere in the month of Feb. But what happened between this Jan and Feb, there happened an inflation and because of this, the per unit price went up. Now you tell me, now you tell me, had you purchased the products on credit, you could have purchased it in the month of Jan itself at the price prevailing in the month of Jan. Correct. The payment could have been done on a later date. No problem. Whereas now, the, now that you are, you do not have this model of cash. Suppose if you do not have this model of credit, if you need to pay by cash, now you need to purchase it only in the month of Feb when the prices have gone up. Or in other words, when there is inflation, when there is an inflation, not taking a credit will actually make you lose some money. Are you clear? With on other words, when there is an inflation, when prices are rising, it is better to go for credit period. That is, it is better to purchase goods by using a credit period because, because make some credit purchases because now you will purchase it at a time when the prices are relatively lower. At the time of payment, even when the uh, prices are higher, you need to only pay that amount which was prevailing at the time of purchase. Correct or not? This is what it is. Number two, Yes, we know that the straight credit is typically an interest-free loan. This is what I said. It is technically funded. It is funded by way of non-cash item. That is, it is not a monetary way of funding, but through materials, they are funding it. So it comes free of interest. That's what they are saying. And number three, inconvenience. Sometimes you might not be having cash whenever you want to purchase. So now in that case, all this taking up credit from the supplier will help you. So this is also one more advantage of taking credit. See how they have used this double negative cost of not taking credit, which means benefit of taking credit. Are you clear with this? That is what they have mentioned. Now in this, in this segment, generally, generally the problem arises with respect to cash discount. The problem arises with respect to cash discount. This is one very good sum given in the Institute study material that we are going to solve right now. So please pay attention to this. Now, many students do not understand this question itself. So first, let me read the question and explain you what is the decision that we need to take. The dolls company purchases raw material on terms of 2 by 10 net 30. First, wait, what do you mean by 2 by 10 net 30? No. No. Generally, the supplier is telling you, so you are the customer, uh, uh, and there is another supplier from whom you are purchasing the goods. He is telling you, that the normal credit period is what you need to make the payment by 30 days correct but 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 if you make the payment before 10 days if you make the payment by 10 days i will give you a cash discount of two percent clear with this now you read this two by ten net 30 means what 30 days is the 
general credit period you need to make the payment anyways by 30 days but but if you make the payment within 10 days you are eligible for a discount of 2% this is called as 2 by 10 net 30 it could be anything 1 by 20 net 40 also it can be are you clear with this but whenever they give this word understand the meaning of it it means this 30 stands for the general credit period maximum credit period but this 10 stands for the credit period before which if you pay you will get a discount of how much to two percentage are you clear with this this is the meaning of this four words given here two by ten net thirty clear with this guys now a review of the company's records by the owner mr gautam revealed that payments are usually made 15 days after the purchases are made so generally what this company is doing the past record shows that the company is making the payment after 15 days only which means are they enjoying this cash discount no they are not enjoying this cash discount right now look at this when asked why the firm did not take advantage of its discount the accountant mr rohit replied that it cost only two percent for these funds whereas a bank loan would cost 12 percentage now what is the justification which mr rohit is saying sir now we are paying after 15 days correct suppose we need to pay it five days in advance that is if i want to avail the discount correct i need to make the payment by the 10th day correct or not so technically speaking technically speaking what i need to do is if i have to make the payment five days in advance now i either, i don't have the funds with me i need to borrow the money from the bank correct if i borrow the money from the bank it will cost me 12 percentage interest correct now why should i pay 12 percentage to get a discount of only two percentage this is the logic that mr rohit the accountant is saying are you clear currently the company is paying it within 15 days now the owner mr gautam is asking why you are not availing the cash discount by paying it within 10 days he's saying if you want me to make the payment before five days then i don't have the money i should borrow it from the bank bank interest will cost 12 percentage why should we borrow money by paying 12 percent interest to get a benefit of two percent discount it doesn't make sense this is the illogical um, this is the illogical explanation that mr rohit is giving clear with this yes analyze what mistake rohit is making number two if the firm could not borrow from the bank and was forced to resort to use the credit funds uh, of trade funds then what suggestion might be made to mohit that would uh, rohit that would reduce the annual interest cost in fact now first of all you understand one thing this 12 percentage is per annum whereas this two percentage what this guy is saying is i will give you a discount of two percentage provided you make the payment five days earlier so technically this two percentage is pertaining to five days this 12 percentage is pertaining to 365 days these two are not comparable assets but this guy the accountant he has made a mistake in comparing these two assets are you clear with this so rohit's argument of comparing the two percentage discount with 12 percentage bank loan rate is not rational as two percentage discount can be earned by making the payment five days in advance whereas 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 so that is within 10 days rather than 15 days right whereas the bank loan of 12 percentage is a cost that is incurred for a one year clear so assume let us say the purchase value is 100 rupees guys this calculation is very important let us say the purchase value is 100 rupees now the discount that can be earned by making the payment within 10 days that is generally you pay it within 15 days now you pay it within 10 days that is by making five days in advance if you make the payment within 10 days how much discount you will get two percentage on 100 you will get two rupees discount correct so the net amount that you will be paying the net amount that you will be paying to your uh, creditor to your supplier will only be rupees 98 yes or no so you will be having two rupees extra with yourself yes guys clear or not now now you tell me now you tell me how much you have paid 98 rupees only is the cost for you now how much you have saved two rupees you have saved correct now this two rupees is the savings for five days so how much is the savings for 365 days this, this two rupees upon 98 so this two rupees is the amount saved for every 98 rupees paid and this is happening for every five days so how much is your overall savings for one year so it is going to be 149 percentage if you annualize it technically speaking this discount can be two percentage 
on the order value but 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 what is happening here because i am making this in five days early this is actually the savings made the percentage two upon 98 if you tell see this it is going to be 2.04 percentage you technically save 2.04 percentage for five days so how much do you save for an entire year technically it's actually the annualized benefit of taking the discount is 149 percentage you should compare this 149 percentage with 12 percentage now you see which is better obviously if i take this uh, if i make use of this particular if i make use of this particular uh, trend uh, this uh, discount this uh, discount that they have mentioned that is 2 by 10 net 30 if i make the payment five days earlier that is before 10 days now i can i can save some discount and the annualized cost of discount is actually 149 percentage as against 12 percentage so it is better for me to borrow at 12 percentage annualized 12 percentage and pay this uh, creditor five days earlier and benefit by 149 percentage so obviously it is better to take the loan pay this creditor five days before itself that is within 10 days and avail the benefit of 149 percentage this two percentage is for five days two upon 98 why is it upon 98 because 98 is the amount that i'm now net of 98 is the amount that flows out of my that is the cash outflow that is happening if i actually go for this discount yes or no so basically two upon 98 you will get the actual savings the discount percentage that you earn that is for five days how much is it for 365 days are you clear with this this means the cost of not taking the discount is 149 percentage so what is suggestible you borrow at 12 percentage make the payment early and avail this benefit of 149 percentage per annum annualized if you annualize it it is 149 percentage but if you're talking about for the five days it is going to be two percent are you clear with this no now suppose the firm could not borrow from the bank and was forced to resort the use of the credit fund trade credit funds what suggestion might be made to rogue that would reduce the annual interest stock no no if i am able to borrow the money i can make the payment quickly and i can make the payment within 10 days and i can get the discount benefit suppose suppose if i am not able to get the bank loan then what needs to be done then anyways you need to pay within 30 days no doubt about that so within 30 days you need to pay suppose you're not getting the loan if you're getting the loan paid within 10 days avail the discount benefit if you're not getting the loan definitely it needs to be within you it needs to be paid within 30 days there is no second thoughts about it that is what they have mentioned the bank loan facility if the bank loan facility could not be available then in this case the company should resort to utilize the maximum credit period as possible therefore the payment should be made in 30 days to reduce the interest cost are you clear with this this also they will borrow maybe if they are not able to immediately arrange the funds they will somehow arrange it after a period of 10 to 12 days yes maybe after some time whatever it is make sure that you are making the payment within 30 days because your overall interest cost will also be minimum of course the company's goodwill is also at stake are you clear with this so in this case you tell me is it better to go for the discount yes absolutely it is better to go for the discount because it gives you a benefit of 149 percentage annualized correct as compared to bank borrowing of only 12 percent so borrow at 12 percent make the payment early and get a benefit of 149 for 149 percentage in an annualized manner are you clear with this and that is about this particular segment of creditors management now the final part is actually financing of working capital this is basically a theoretical part so now in the first segment of the chapter we saw how do you calculate the amount of working capital required correct working capital investment how do you calculate the amount yes we saw current assets minus current liabilities we saw all those calculations with the working capital cycle and all now this segment talks about how do you finance it how do you arrange for this finance correct after determining the amount of working capital required the next step to be taken by the finance manager is to arrange the funds as discussed earlier it is advisable that the finance manager bifurcates the working capital re uh, requirements between permanent and temporary so permanent working capital means what at any given point of time it should be there in the business temporary i told you it's only a seasonal requirement so this needs to be classified permanent working capital is always needed hence it should be financed through long-term sources such as debt and equity are you clear with this this is where i said your working capital finance is not a short-term finance it is a long-term source of finance that needs to be arranged so you can also arrange it through your debt and equity channel on the contrary temporary working capital may be arranged through some short-term uh, sources of finance so broadly speaking the working capital finance can be uh, classified into two categories spontaneous sources and negotiable sources spontaneous sources are the source of finance which naturally arise in the course of business operation that is not
nothing but your creditors correct trade credit credit from employees credit from suppliers of services that is outstanding wages for one month delay they will accept all these things these are spontaneous sources that is they are naturally bundled in the course of the business whereas negotiated sources is what you going to a bank and asking for some loan on the other hand the negotiated sources as the name implies are those which have to be specifically negotiated with the lenders say commercial banks financial institutions general public etc and the finance manager has to be very careful while selecting a particular source or a combination thereof for financing of working capital are you clear with this this is basically a theoretical part and with this we have completed this particular chapter now now this is actually a very big chapter working capital is actually a very big chapter now we have spent approximately about two and a half hours in condensing the entire chapter on a bird's eye view right so this marathon will help you revise all these concepts covered in this particular chapter because this chapter working capital management this is actually a very big chapter it has six units inside it i told you it's actually a big chapter there is a lot of numerical problems that needs to be solved that i generally do it in my regular course but in a fast track course i wanted to touch upon the important aspects in every single uh, unit so that is why we have seen all the six units in that the important and the tricky areas we have explained it here but don't think that working capital is only this much there are some extra issues that needs to be discussed but that the, those issues i've just generally i cover it in my fast track but in this marathon whatever is important utmost important area i have picked it up and i have compiled it and i think we have done about five questions in this particular segment so that will do for this particular revision clear with this yes Hey guys, I hope you really enjoyed this marathon. So if you've learned something new in this video, so please do share this with your friends and do let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. So before we sign off, I just wanted to give you guys a small message. Now, guys, there are many students I've seen. They feel that, you know, they failed many times and, uh, you know, it's only failure that they keep seeing in their lives every time so whether should i write this attempt or i should not write this attempt all these things you know these kind of confusion is there now trust me you are not the only person who feels like that so you are not alone in this so many students including myself as a student i have felt like this many times so you are not alone in this remember one thing hard work will never fail you so you just keep putting your efforts and you just leave the results. Don't think about the results today. Right now, you just focus on the things that are within your control. You take an example of MS Dhoni. So now MS Dhoni, even during the times when, you know, he's under a lot of pressure, he's calm and cool in his head. And that is the reason automatically he actually makes the entire, uh, he makes us all proud by, you know, making sure that India wins the game. So basically what he says, after an interview, uh, after the match got over in an interview, uh, someone asked Dhoni, like, the entire stadium was, you know, uh, we were all tensed and you just seem to be, you know, calm and all that. So how are you able to do that? The very simple thing that he said is, you just focus on the things that are within your control. You focus on the controllables. The next delivery, the ball that the bowler is going to bowl, that is in my control. I can set the field accordingly. But, but, whether winning or losing, that is not in my control. That is a consequence of whatever actions that we do. Now, this is exactly what I tell my students as well. These are certain things that you can learn from legends like people around. Now, I generally share the story of Ratan Tata. Uh, if you've already attended the costing marathon, so I would have already shared this before. You know, Ratan Tata, just a small story and a key takeaway from this, a much, much needed uh, lesson, a life lesson that we all need to learn. You know, Ratan Tata, actually, uh, you know who Ratan Tata is. So he is the man in charge of uh, this Tata group of companies. So the startup group of companies in the flagship, uh, the topmost company, the holding company is called as Tata Sons. And this Tata Sons has many group companies inside it, like Tata Consultancy Services, right? You have Tata Motors, Tata LXC, you have many companies, Tata Power and all. Now, now Tata was already into so many business. Now they wanted to enter into automobile business. They want to enter into automobile business. So they started something called as Tata Motors. So now they started this Tata Motors and, uh, you know, 
this company was doing and they just started the business they were doing something somehow ratan tata felt that you know he is not able to uh, justify in this tata motors he is not able to show big results in this tata motors so what he did was he went to the united states he went to the us to meet mr henry ford so henry ford is the chairman of ford this company called as ford automobiles so he is the chairman of ford so uh, mr ratan tata went to henry ford he said look i am helpless with this company alone i am successful in all other companies but this uh, tata motors alone so somewhere i feel you know we are not able to make much of profits so are you willing to buy my company so he offered to sell his company to ford now this guy henry ford he should have said yes i am ready to buy or no i am not ready to buy either of these two things is what he should have said you know he said he said look this automobile sector is all for americans so you indian people are not fit to run this automobile industry and all he said something like that and then and then he said anyway since you have come to me for help and all so i will pay you this much and uh, you can just sell the your company and go off that's all basically he treated not just ratan tata with disrespect he actually made the entire nation he actually talked about the entire nation he said no look you guys are not even fit for this now mr ratan tata a man of such a high stature and dignity he walked back from this room and when he took his flight from the us back to india he told himself one thing no matter what i am going to put all my efforts on this company tata motors and make sure that this company makes it to the top one day now what he did he came back to india he put a lot of efforts in this company slowly this company started growing big this company started growing big and even today if you see you know what in india you have this uh, car to, even today you have this car called as tata indica right you know what this car is all about this is the first car that is made 100% in india that was first introduced by tata motors only yes 100% every component is also made and assembled in india only so tata brought this and of course tata is the leader in all the commercial vehicles uh, segment if you see this tata as and all for all the commercial purposes for all their goods transportation so tata is actually leading in this now slowly tata became a very very huge company in this automobile sector so the tata motors grew to such extent and there came a time somewhere in the year 2008 when there was a great economic recession there was a huge financial crisis and in europe this company this company ford they were holding they were actually owning two companies called as jaguar and land rover right now during this year 2008 now ford was not able to manage these two companies jaguar and land rover because of the recession that hit the entire country and now guess what happened our guy ratan tata he went to mr henry ford and he said don't worry i will rescue you so i will purchase these two companies jaguar land rover and today this jaguar land rover is owned by tata motors are you clear with this so basically what happened this man of such a high stature now look at the way he replied back to this henry ford he didn't you know this guy henry ford had initially what he did he had basically what uh, he had uh, made him feel bad he had talked something bad about him generally what people do we go to the press and we will see if we are of a person like uh, ratan tata you will say look this guy did this and all he is talking bad about me look what mr ratan tata did two life lessons that we ne- need to learn from him the first thing is determination he told himself that no matter what one day this company i will make it to the top and not just that he went back and he rescued the same person who once intimidated him now just imagine what kind of gesture is that right that is the first learning that we need to learn and number 2 work hard in silence let your success make all the noise he didn't go around and say no one day i will make tata motors great and all these things no he worked hard in silence and the result talked for itself and the results talked for itself clear with this this is exactly what he did and guys this is what even we need to follow now now what you need to do is right now just stay focused with the process whatever work that you are doing just stay focused on it just do not worry about your results whether you pass or fail that is definitely not in your control what is right in your control is this very second 
with which we can use and prepare for your exams. You make the maximum use of the every second that passes by and automatically, automatically what will happen? The results will only be in your favor. You need not worry about it. So work hard in your silence. Let your success make all the noise. You need not go around and keep telling people that I'm reading for studying for 15 hours a day, 10 hours a day. No, you do it in silence. The results will talk for itself. Clear? And don't worry about the results today. The results will automatically come if you focus on your preparation. Fine, guys. This is one small thing that I wanted to share with you because generally as we, uh, you know, as we enter the exam zone, as we near the exam dates, generally there is a huge uh, human tendency for all of us to feel tense. Now, I'm just requesting you guys not to feel tense. I know it's easy to say every time you feel tense, just ask yourself, what is the thing that is making me feel tense? It is about the result. Let me not worry about the result this very second. Let me do whatever I'm responsible to do. So this second, let me just prepare for my exams and automatically the results will be in your favor. Are you clear with this? So on that note, I'm signing off with this uh, revision marathon. All the very best to you guys. And I'm sure you will make it very big in your life. So thank you all so much and see you all in CA final.